going on with that PPP? You done a lot of talking, not a lot to see. Up in the millions like 2.3. But Jeff got it all getting off scot free. Try to talk tips like we talking about stock. But you're talking about men printed on cause stock. When you open your mouth, I take it with a grain of salt. Cause the market's down and you're a clown, it's all your fault. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. Did you dip Jeff? I think you dip Jeff. What you talking about? I don't think you dip yet. Willie's doing shady shit like the GOBs, like his whole failed thing with them NFTs. Taking money from the people to pay. Most of them are broke, but that's okay. He's getting money. Even better tax free. Loving all the stimulus from PPP. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. What's going on with that PPP? You done a lot of talking, not a lot to see. Up in the millions like 2.3. But Jeff got it all getting off scot free. Try to talk tips like we talking about stock. But you're talking about men printed on cause stock. When you open your mouth, I take it with a grain of salt. Cause the market's down and you're a clown, it's all your fault. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. Did you dip Jeff? I think you dip Jeff. What you talking about? I don't think you dip yet. Willie's doing shady shit like the GOBs, like his whole failed thing with them NFTs. Taking money from the people to pay. Most of them are broke, but that's okay. He's getting money. Even better tax free. Loving all the stimulus from PPP. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. What is going on, everybody? Hopefully, guys are doing well out there. It is time for another Thursday night, as it is opening day, if you will, around Major League Baseball. And it's certainly time to open up a few things here. I'm sure there's people tuning into the stream that are maybe opening up a beverage, opening up a Ziploc baggie, and opening up. A little can of whoop ass for some of these influencers and people around the hobby. A lot of people in this industry want to get their face on a Topps baseball card and collect no residual royalties on the product sale. A lot of other people want to build up a social media following for the sole fact and be able to sell it months later for tens of thousands of dollars. Sports car radio just exists to one day get that phone call from either Michael Rubin or collectors or one of these big time companies. And we can ride off in the sunset with a couple million dollars. But until that day comes, sports car radio exists solely to bring you the truth about the industry. We do it every Thursday night worldwide live here on YouTube and other social media sites. We are joined by super producer Tim in the background, who is not happy that the buyout offer, he saw that, what was it, collect journalism, or we'll be talking about that today. There's a new quote, we'll put this in air quote, guys, journalistic outlet coming to the sports card world. They're going to bring you hard-hitting journalism, whatever that means. He is sad that they didn't come with a buyout since that would have been their easiest way to buy some credibility into the industry is to simply buy sports card radio. They decided not to do that. So Tim is still grinding, still working for that 4.2% equity that'll eventually vest over 
at Sports Card Radio. We are also joined by none other than Ryan, who is joining us from, it looks like, Cards HQ, which last week they were talking about strippers Ooh. on the live stream at Cards HQ. So we've already got our little first slip up on the live stream at Cards HQ. Pretty soon it'll be maybe some pack dipping and some other stuff that we'll have to deep dive into. How are we doing tonight? Doing excellent. You know, I didn't have Strippers HQ on the agenda to talk about tonight, but we might have to slip that in there if you know what I mean. Slip it in. And uh, talk about and talk about the Strippers, maybe Magic City, maybe Cheetah. What are some of the other good, maybe the chat can help us out of some of the good establishments besides the legendary Cards HQ. If you do want to go to a gentleman's club, you know, Jeff, like he said, he wanted to be 24 hours. Most of the places I know that are 24 hours, boy, in those after hours, there's some seedy things going on. So we'll maybe have to dive dive head first into Strippers HQ. But on the agenda, ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot going on in the sports card world. Besides five of your favorite influencers getting their debut on their big league trading cards ladies and gentlemen look at that fantastic team tops right there team hobby positivity all 10 of them i created that little uh boy like a family photo right there so absolutely beautiful i'll take credit for that one anyways on the agenda we'll be talking about our hobby heroes today on today's show we've also got makari who Yes, selling website Macari ditched their selling fees. Just kind of moved them from one person to another, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some rumors going around Las Vegas, Nevada about Shohei Otani and some of his prolific bets. Caleb Williams is about to become a household name, and there was a viral photograph floating around the internet. I believe it was yesterday, the last couple days. And uh, we like to observe pictures of men on the show. We like to observe pictures of women. We do not discriminate here on Sports Card Radio, despite what you may, may read places, what you may see places, that we're racist, that we should be canceled. No, we don't discriminate. We'll look at pictures of women and pictures of men, and we have a picture of Caleb Williams to dissect. So I know you guys are looking forward to that. We've got a trimmed, speaking of looking closely at cards, we've got a trimmed Steph Curry card to look at. And you know we're going to be talking about these influencers' cards, and you already teased it at the beginning of the show. Apparently some hobby journalism is coming into the space. So we'll see if... Uh, Who's excited about that and who is not? And who are the actual, quote, journalists that are going to be writing for this new publication or website or whatever the heck it is? So does that whet your appetite? Are you ready to win a Michael Lola Candy Clear Ultra Platinum Met wow. rookie card tonight? Only 66 of these puppies. So you don't get a lot of opportunities the center from University of the Pacific. 22 points a game that senior season. 60% field goals. They should have done the hack-a-shack. I mean, if you only shoot 48% from the line, then should have saw a little more hack all of a candy. It's tough. It's tough in college to do hack-a-shack because you have like one guy that can legitimately guard him. And then I think you only get five fouls in college. So if you foul out your one guy that's like 6'11", then all of a sudden Olo Candy would have 50 a night. He had some good games. I remember a 15 for 15 game where I think he had 39 and 17 rebounds or something. That probably earned him a lot of money that particular night. So we're one of the few people, besides maybe some set collectors of this or some other brethren of Stockton, California that are after that tonight, how about your girl Livy Dunn? Four hundred twenty-seven dollars. I mean, pictures of men. Of self that, uh, there's a lot of people after this in a lot of ways. But what do you think about you know pictures of men sell for one price, but four hundred and twenty-seven dollars? 
for this girl's autograph. That that seems pretty strong, yeah. doesn't it? That seems pretty strong. Uh, my, my, I, I don't know where she is in her career at LSU, but you know, my 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 thoughts go to um, you know, what's her what's her career like after um, once she settles down, maybe gets married, something like that. Does that reduce the mm. you know reduce the allure uh, when she's out of college? Does that reduce the urge, if you will, to buy her cards? I don't know. We'll see. She could, um, you know, parlay this into even something even more successful, maybe a uh, commentating of, or of, of gymnastics or a number of different things she could probably get into. I'm sure maybe fashion and all those other things, acting. I don't know. A um, lot of different things I'm sure she can get into uh, 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 some topics that I don't think you have on the on the on the show. But we were just setting we just set up at a card show. And we did. I think what we've seen is over the last maybe year or two, maybe it's been longer than this. I don't really exactly know the timeline, but one thing that I thought was interesting is the quote comp that these guys are willing to give you has gone from kind of like 70 to 80. Now we're seeing like 85% comp. We know people privately that are getting a hundred percent comp for cards, largely because what happens is, is people would come over to our table buy the cards and they would have a buyer on the other end, whether it's on whatnot or whether they had a repacker that they were then reflipping the card to at a higher comp value. But right now cards are single cards. Well, I wouldn't necessarily call them hot. You do have a culture out there that is paying upwards of 80, 85. We had people legitimately said that they would pay 85 for comp for a card which means they'd probably pay 90, which means in the background, they're probably getting 100% comp. Some people are getting it on whatnot. Some people are getting it, reflipping it out to a breaker. And so we've talked about how certainly that's great for the single card market. That's certainly propping up the breaking market. That's certainly propping up a lot of different players and the market for a lot of these cards. It certainly has coincided with a, a lot of floor values. I think we had a Michael Jordan card that, trade slightly above uh, the prices that it was trending at. We've seen other cards more or less start to stabilize in price. You don't, you do have cards continuing to drop in value, but you do have uh, cards beginning to stabilize, if you will, in price. A lot of that is coinciding with the fact that you have flippers and, and investors, I'll put that in air quotes out there, kind of reflipping these cards. If that stalls out, if the repack product all, all of a sudden the interest in that starts to stall out. And I think we could potentially see that at some point, if fanatics finally rolls up these licenses and, and puts out compelling products and gets people to, to buy them. Um, maybe the repack product isn't as alluring, if you will. Um, and obviously the whatnot sales, if that happens to cool down, but right now you pull a card, you're getting 85% comp, no matter who it is. And uh, so the market is hot and we certainly saw that firsthand last week in the great city of San Francisco. The, there was just a lot of activity and we moved through. I think we each walked away with over a thousand dollars in our pockets. And considering we didn't spend a ton on the hotel, it was actually a marginally profitable weekend, at least from some standpoints. So uh, I thought that was interesting. And we'll see how long that lasts. We've certainly seen that in other markets. Certainly happens in the in the luxury market, luxury watch market. Um, once that flipper, though, if that flipper were to step out of the market, the repacker were to step out of the product, tell you what, uh, prices would decline rapidly. I think who it hurts probably the most is the average collector out there. Because if you didn't, if I tell you what, if you didn't have breakers and you didn't have flippers. Oh my gosh, the price of these cards would be back to like 2012 levels. You'd have the top rookie, their top card would sell for like 300 bucks and all the other cards would be worth almost nothing. So uh, it, it definitely is inflating and jacking up the prices of pretty much all cards across the board. So I thought that was probably the most interesting thing from the San Francisco card show. Shout out to the Auburn card show for getting us out there and uh that certainly made it more profitable as well uh when you're when you're compensated a little bit so 
that's what I had. You also had a, an excellent video from AIH Sports. He had a video that he posted, I think, last night where he talked about market movers. So he was on market movers, and this came to him via Pancake Analytics. And it's not that one, but it, he was on market movers. Mm. And what he found was that when you're searching for certain items, so the sports card dad did a video, and this is not really a dig at sports card dad, although people do tend to like the tee off on sports card dad for whatever reason. And it's more than fair. Uh, if you put yourself out there, you're going to get teed off on as we've experienced plenty of times in our lifetime. But he did a video talking about how a certain card was up a certain percentage. But if you dug into the details on the market movers app, they were counting PSA 10 sales inside of the data that was only supposed to calculate PSA nine sales. And so market movers and how many employees do you think market movers has these days, Ryan? Any estimate? Any, any double digit, there? probably double, double digit. digit employees. Uh, so I don't know if that's true or if that's still the case, but at one time I think there was 20 to 30 employees over at market movers. They can't get the data collection feed. And, and that's actually something really simple. You should be able to filter out PSA 9s versus PSA 10s. Like, it's not particularly hard. I could see when the card number is 9 and the card number is 10. Training a computer system to tell the difference might be a little difficult. These are things I've done. As I said, we speak from experience here, Ryan. I actually own a sports card price guide website that does north of six figures in revenue every single year. One employee, which is myself, so technically zero employees. And, uh, you know, we're, we're constantly in the talks to, to liquidate and sell that site as well. Uh, it, it is not very difficult to filter these things out, but some, for some reason, Jeff and his tech executive background and his 29 employees can't figure it out. And I thought AIH Sports did a nice job on his video outlining this so you got to be careful you on these market mover sites since we talk uh, and that's kind of why i led with comps you got 85 percent comps well if you're going to market movers to get your comp cool. you need to be a little careful and it might work out for you it actually might work out for you if you're there trying to sell a card and the guy's got market movers up you might actually be happy because the comp on that card might be overestimated because market mover has not been able to filter out PSA nines versus PSA 10, which again, should not be a problem unless the card number is nine or 10, then it gets a little, then you might have to do some further filtering, maybe some human intervention. So I thought that was interesting. Then you also had a post from a fan of the show, Ziggy. He uh, broke down the cost of a breaker breaking monopoly. And I think it was like, it was like $1,500 more than, so there it is right there, kind of in that thumbnail. So like, it was incredible. So a case of Monopoly was 1,500, maybe a single box is like 800. The cost, like you can buy the pro, you can buy a whole case for 2,300 and a breaker after all of their charges. I understand a breaker has got to have supplies, a breaker's base baking in um, shipping cost. So there's going to be a markup. But we're talking about a huge markup over and above kind of the, the cost of this stuff. And so I, I, I just think, and you have the websites out there like Break Comp. Like, I, I just think that people need to be a little bit more price sensitive to this stuff, especially on the stuff that's not, uh, you know, particularly rare. Like Monopoly Prism is not rare at all. And so uh, I would just like to see people be a little bit more price sensitive to this stuff, understand what it's cost. Yes. The breaker has got to break in some costs on some supplies. He's got to, you know, do got to have labor. There's a cost to be streaming to a certain degree as well. Uh, there's a sorting cost and all that stuff. But are we talking about, we, we got to give these guys a hundred percent markup on this. I mean, this is one of the reasons why these cards are so damn expensive. And instead of going in there and getting in on the break, get your community, come to sports card radio every Thursday night. We're here for free with a chat room that is as large or larger than any other chat room that you'll find in the hobby. Come here, chat it up with your fellow card fondlers. 
And then if you want to case a monopoly, just buy it off, buy it off of eBay, break it to your heart's content, sell off the extras, grade, trim, clean, wax, do everything that you need to do to those cards. And that's what I would advise. Seems to me this is over and above profit margins. I'm all about capitalism. I'm all about people making money, but this certainly seems slightly egregious in my opinion. And this goes on all the time, week after week, product after product. This is happening. Last topic that I thought of is Ryan, they have a transcendent party coming up. And there is, I believe, a transcendent party invitation for sale on eBay. I don't know the details about it, but I did notice that there was one invitation. Apparently, there are I think 120 or so, nor we'll call this normal invitations. And then you have kind of, I think there's 10 super VIP. I think you're going to have to do like a uh, invite or something, but some, somebody has one up. One of the, one of the consigners has one up. There it is right there. So I'm not exactly sure where this is. I'm not exactly sure who's going to be there, but you've attended uh, many of these in the past. But uh, needless to say, that's on my watch list. And if it ends under a certain price, this is a quote fanatics Michael Rubin event, mm. which are a hell of a lot cooler than a lot of the employees that either worked at tops or still do work at tops. And maybe there's potential for, you know, not just men showing up. Michael Rubin's known to have these big parties, Ryan. And Ooh, we could go down a rabbit hole and talk about who could be there, but I think you could probably imagine a couple of, uh, I mean, didn't we have him on last week's show hanging out with Kylie and, and the other ones for, for, uh, you know, if they're at this party, that would probably make wow. it, you know, once that works, $2,500 might, might be a little, little light, uh, what you might be able to pay for that. So that's, that's just what I had. Uh, side topics to today's show and certainly transcend you. I mean, you can let people know more about these transcendent parties than I can, but uh, an exclusive invitation to party with the people over at tops might be kind of interesting. Well, back in the day when nobody knew anything about these, you could go, go to these parties and they give you enough giveaways to where you make all your money back and you actually like make money going to these parties. Even with the, even with the flight, even with going to Vegas and dusting off some money at the craps table, like you end up coming up because you do get some pretty sweet giveaways. I've gotten Hank Aaron book cards. I've gotten all kinds of good stuff at these giveaways. Now at the past parties, this is where you got an opportunity to get into Ginter, and this is where if if I would have won, you know, to be into Allen and Ginter, you would have had your own card into Allen and Ginter. Man, I would have auctioned that off so fast to Tom Fish. A blowout sports cards who was offering i think ten thousand dollars for the opportunity to uh be into allen and genter so definitely something to keep an eye out these passes have gone into the close to five figures i think in recent years and the giveaways at the parties aren't quite as good as you're oh you're cracking into some uh belvedere we got it we got a we got a long night to talk about. I did want to jump back to the Ziggy No topic. I think the breaker who was overcharging is one of the guys on the Hobby Hero list over here. The Hobby Hero oh, top squad, Mister Chai City Pulls. So something oh, to something to be aware of. These breakers. Well, I I saw that Mister Pulls is. I I think he's moving to Vegas. I think he's starting a card shop with somebody. I think I saw this on YouTube, so I I, I don't know enough about it other than I okay. saw a, th a thumbnail and a title on YouTube. But I think Mr. Poles is not going to be Mr. Chai City's Poles. He's going to be uh, Sin City Poles here in a minute. And okay. uh, he, I, I think he's chasing his dream, opening up a card shop, I think. There he is in Las Vegas. This looks incredibly okay. safe. Oh, he's in the back of the car. Okay, I thought he was driving. <laughs> okay. So uh, as someone who once moved to Vegas myself, I, I will say that uh, although I moved from California, I don't know what it is moving from Illinois to Vegas. I would say I 
I had a six months lease on a place and I left in the fifth month. So that, that'll tell you what I thought of, of Las Vegas, Nevada, but be careful who you're buying breaks from and websites like break comp have come along and, and definitely improved the visibility into what these breakers are charging. But speaking of fees, Macari has done away with selling fees for the seller. They have just actually pushed them over to the buyer. They've kind of like added a buyer's premium, similar to how, you know, auctions like Golden, PWCC, and all these other auction houses, they add a buyer's premium on top of the quote sale price. What are your thoughts? I don't know if you saw this, but what are your thoughts on Macari? essentially shifting the fees from the sellers to the buyers. Well, Is, that's, does that's this, quite does interesting. this move the needle? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it necessarily moves the needle uh, necessarily, but th this certainly probably keeps Macari in the, in the conversation of websites that people, I, I think it's probably won the battle against, I think there was offer up and maybe a couple other ones out there that were trying to pop up during the pandemic when everybody was just kind of sitting around with nothing to do. Um, so it certainly keeps it in the, in the conversation uh, from the buyer's perspective. I don't know how excited you are to see that. I hope that they just bakes it into the price. So if somebody lists something for $20 on the website, it, it it just bakes that extra 5% in there. And then, then I'm just getting the, the card or whatever I'm trying to buy on McCarty for that price. Now, now speaking of fees, I thought it was interesting. I don't know if you saw, but right before the show, and I don't know if this is a private offer just to us because we've, we've bought and sold on, on golden site a fair amount over the past year or so, but they did send us an email that if you had something to list in, I think it was the upcoming Alita auction. They also had like a, like a super tier auction coming up, like a hundred like a hundred premium items or something. But they were going to give you a hundred percent of the hammer price plus an extra seven percent. So you were going to get a hundred and seven percent for items. I think it was it had to. It's not the weekly auction. It was like the lead auction. So you have to have something that's worth five thousand bucks. And I was like looking around my house. I was like. Do I have something that I could sell for five thousand dollars? Because it seems like a, a reasonable deal, right? If you were going to sell it anyways, now you're going to get a hundred and seven percent of the hammer. And what we've noticed on on Golden, especially, I, I think the the repackers and the Macari flippers, like you ain't getting great deals over here like we were a year ago. We were on this site and we were getting comic. Like I showed you one of the comic books we bought for five hundred that just sold for sixteen hundred. Like that, and at the time it was worth like maybe eleven, twelve hundred dollars. So we got, we were getting items like half off of comp. Now on Golden, you're getting damn near full comp. Um, so I, I think it's turned instead of being more of a an opportunity to buy, especially on the single card side. I think you're having more luck with the lots. So there's these broader lots on there. Um, you, I, I think you can find some value there. Certainly Michael with candy cards, nobody really cares about those. So, so there's some value there maybe potentially to fill out PC items or, or stuff that you like, but uh, yeah, 107%. So check your email. If you, if you've done business with golden over the past uh, year or so, check your email. They're offering at least to us privately. I can't imagine it's just us. Uh, they're offering 107%. So I thought that was, that was interesting. I think you can do well buying and selling cards that repackers don't want. Like this is a card a repacker would want Ichiro Otani duel. If that came out of a, a, you know, one of these nebulas or flamethrowers, people would get excited. You know, that would be like a let's go a situation. But it, yeah. like you said, if you're playing in the space where you're either cheaper cards or cards vintage. like Michael can't right. Vintage as well. I think, you know, you're not running up against these guys who are willing to just blindly buy cards of basically anybody for 80 to 85 to 90 percent, even 100 percent of comps. Uh, you know, I'm hearing about hobby stores that that, yeah, they're just shipping out six figures worth of cards to repackers uh, basically monthly because it's easy for the repacker. It's either easier for the sports card store. They can buy cards at whatever 70 80 percent of comps in their store and ship them out in one box right to a repacker so it's interesting how the gambling side of the hobby is propping up 
single certain single card prices yeah the kind of the bigger cards the cards that that kind of make the newer generation kind of go wow so that is you know that is very interesting and it is interesting how you said golden's running a promotion you see a site like Mercari. Now this probably wasn't done to lure sports card sellers, but you are seeing these marketplaces try to bring you in and try to bring items in. I think that's interesting that, you know, they're, Hey, they're looking for stuff to sell. Maybe it's, maybe it's harder to find good stuff to sell. And that's why they are offering these types of promotions. So it'll be you know, interesting to kind of see what's going on. Do you want to hear about a little rumor? We were never shy to, you know, we're not real journalists over here. We don't have that. No, we're not. We didn't proclaim on Twitter this week that we're real journalists. So we can dive kind of head first into some of these rumors. And as somebody who's lived in Las Vegas, uh, this this Las Vegas locally Twitter account sometimes does kind of shout out some Vegas rumors. And months later, they turn out to actually hit the mark. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, but quite often, to be perfectly honest. Let me uh, read this one to you. There are some wild rumors floating around Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada, about Major League Baseball star Shohei Otani, his mysterious friend, Ipe, illegal bookie Matt Boyer, illegal bookie Wayne Nix, another illegal bookie from California, and their relationship to some high-level Las Vegas strip casino executives your thoughts on Mr. Otani and his connection to Las Vegas and the illegal betting world. What do you think? Well, I, I think there's very little, little, we'll put this in air quote. I, I think broadly speaking, there's very little journalism going on these days. You're either a left wing journalist and you're just licking the nut uh, of Joe Biden and the Democratic Party, or you're a right wing a journalist and you're licking the nutsack of Trump and the Republican party. There's very few people that are actually out there trying to find the truth. And then as it relates to a I don't think anybody in the major league baseball has any interest in finding out the truth. This is very much like when Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, this was in the midst of them hitting all those home runs. There was nobody no. And I, I that's an exaggeration. But nobody, at least at Major League Baseball, that Sammy gave Sosa. a crap about what they were taking to accomplish those feats. And right now, there is nobody in the sports world. There is nobody at the L.A. Times. There is nobody in the world that really wants to get to the bottom of this Otani situation. Because the more you peel back this onion, the stinkier it gets. He has to have some involvement in what was happening, whether it was extremely close ties, he knew what the bets, what bets were being placed. He knew when to throw a bad game and when to have a good game. So remember, this is a two-way player. If you're betting on your own games and you're pitching and hitting, you have a much, much bigger impact on that game than say just a starting pitcher or just a batter who's going to bat four times you're going to potentially throw 80 to 90 balls in that game and you're going to get three to four at bats in that game. And so if you were going to find somebody in baseball that could throw a game, it is the one player that is going both ways. So I think there's a lot, there's a lot of smoke to this story. And, and when there's smoke, there should be fire and Major League Baseball wouldn't have backed themselves into this corner if they hadn't played the Pete Rose hand. They have played the Pete Rose betting on baseball hand so hard, not for a year, not for five years, not for 10 years. We're talking about decades, decades. They have played no. the Pete Rose bet on baseball hand so hard that they have to come down on players like this. They were looser on steroids than they were betting on baseball at one time. They didn't even test for steroids at one time. There are players in the Hall of Fame that took steroids. But Pete Rose is probably sitting right now at the Cortez 
with a little TV monitor with some horses going on, and he's signing his autograph for $40 a pop. So they played the Pete Rose hand. They never folded. They never backed down. And so as it relates to Otani, you have to have the same, you have to have the same standard. You have to hold Otani to the same standards as you did Pete Rose. And, and now we're talking about even more money and an even bigger star potentially to the game. Although Pete Rose all-time leading hits King, obviously one of the, you know, probably top 25 baseball players of all time. Maybe it may, might be higher on the list than that. So they played the Pete Rose hand very hard. And, th and that is why I think they need to, that is why they're shying away from this because they realized they overplayed the Pete Rose hand. And now it'd be difficult to walk it back. If all this truth came out about Otani, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I'm almost positive. Otani has involvement in what was going on. Japanese, you know. if you look at Japanese culture, Ryan, Japanese culture, and I, I'm pretty sure his 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 interpreter was Japanese. It's actually pretty rare what he did. If what they are accusing of uh, of doing is actually kind of rare in Japanese culture to steal and lie and be deceitful. Mm -hmm. That's not really like when you think of somebody that's Japanese. Like, you don't really think about that, right? Like, you don't really think of, oh, that Japanese guy, he's, you know, he's, he's deceitful, he's stealing, he's a thief. No, they actually tend to be rather honest, rather honorable, rather hardworking. So it's hard for me to believe that he went behind Otani's back, who was a friend, probably one of his only friends, maybe potentially over here in America. I don't know their, the full story. Not an Angels fan. Wouldn't call myself an Otani fan. Certainly not a Dodgers fan. But this just this just really, really reeks. And Major League Baseball more or less backed themselves in the corner. If they had if they had taken a slightly softer stance on Pete Rose at some point, I think they could probably walk sidestep this Otani thing, but they never did that. They never did that. And I think we're going to see this uh, more and more through athletics. I think I saw another headline that was a basketball player that was uh, that it was accused more or less of kind of the same thing, kind of betting on games. I mean, you got DraftKings, you got MGM, you got all this money flowing out there. Otani's certainly making enough money where I, I, I don't necessarily say he certainly has a gambling problem. So you have the combination of those two things. You have athletes who have nothing really to do. Okay, Otani can't necessarily walk out on the streets of L.A., and go have a good time and go party it up like Ryan can tonight. So they're stuck in their hotel room. They have nothing to do. There's nothing that really gets them going other than playing these games. And maybe having a Livy Dunn type come up to the room every for an hour or two. And so betting on these games gets them going a little bit. So, Jeez. yeah, I don't know. Interesting story. I think there's a lot more to this, whether or not the, quote, journalistic outlets out there really care, want to get to the bottom of it. We'll certainly see. But certainly we'll be here to see any of the fallout that persists as it relates to Mr. Otani. We will. Shout out to everybody in the chat, the super chats. We will we will definitely address these later. Yes, you can definitely make a song for us. Christine's stripping guys over here, so maybe Whoa. we're the ones. We we should be the ones actually super chatting Christine if if she's allowed to strip. Then I mean, Queen City cards in the house, Jason Moran in the house. So yeah, we will see what happens. The Mister Otani. A lot of people in the in the baseball world, a lot of people in the sports card world, just want to sweep this under the rug. Like they're oh, but, oh Otani, he lives his life with integrity. How the fuck do you guys know? Stop. How the how the hell do you know how Shohei Otani's lived? He doesn't even speak English. We don't know how, what this guy's like at all. So we'll see. Speaking of pick pictures of men i don't know if you saw this 
But uh, we, you know, we dissect pictures of men very closely. PSA has made a business out of giving pictures of men and women, I guess, scores um, where they rate them on a one to 10 scale. People use Kurt's card care juice and other substances to rub on these pictures of men and women to try and improve their condition. So we're, we're not shy to really examine a picture of a man or a woman. So I do want to examine this picture of Caleb Williams, USC quarterback, who is uh, primed to be the number one pick in the NFL draft. I think that's got to be what in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Chicago Bears hold that pick. What we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is we have with a appears to be maybe an iPhone, pink iPhone, like a pink, maybe uh, wallet or credit card holder. Then we have pink nails. This is not a doctored photograph. I thought, oh, this is fake. No, I believe he actually even in included pink lipstick or lip gloss or something. Uh, what are your thoughts about LGBTQ QB1? I mean, Caleb Williams <laughs> rocking the uh, the interesting, you know, is this the new thing? Or, we're old. So is, is this yeah. the good... You know, we couldn't have got away with this in our day back oh at University God. of the Pacific when we ball boyed for Michael Oluwa Candy. We, you know, we couldn't have got away with this. Uh, I don't think. What What are your thoughts about Caleb Williams and his 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 choices? Well, well okay, so yeah, Caleb Williams is more than welcome to paint his fingernails whatever color he wants, uh, and have whatever color iPhone he wants. Uh, I do notice he doesn't have the high-end iPhone, so that's that, that might be he, you have three camera lenses on the high-end iPhone, so he's made a poor decision there. So I think it's an extra two hundred dollars to get that extra lens on there. Okay, uh, he has pink lipstick on apparently, allegedly. I, I first of all, yeah, I don't have any problem with anybody that wants to do this. Now, I think w in the context of Caleb Williams being the number one NFL draft pick again don't really have a problem with that but what we've seen at the quarterback position in the NFL is that it is obviously one of the most difficult positions to be a lead at we've certainly seen that over the last year card collectors have really felt the brunt of that you've had players like Mac Jones who've disappointed you had the kid for the Jets I can't even remember his name you had uh, who else was uh, drafted more recently? Well, I, the guy that he's going to replace, uh, Justin Fields in, in Chicago. And so you've had time and time again, these quarterbacks come up and end up disappointing, whether they're drafted number one or later in the first, second, third, fourth round. They constantly disappoint. It is because it's less about athletic ability. Caleb Williams probably has more athletic ability than all 700 people, including you and I, watching in the chat tonight. Certainly, maybe there's some people that have some athletic ability. I'm not one of them. He's got exceptional talent. I'm sure he can throw a football through a, a tire at any distance that you want him to do. I'm sure you can get him out on the practice field seven on seven. Certainly, when USC was playing lower tier competition in the Pac-12 or whatever conference they, they're playing in these days. I'm sure he looks great. I'm sure he looks absolutely fantastic. But can he walk into an NFL locker room? And I, again, I understand times have changed. All these NFL players are, are 21, 22, 25 years old these days. Can he walk in an NFL locker room and lead his team to the Super Bowl when he's got pink fingernails, pink lipstick, and a pink iPhone? If you're winning games in Chicago, this will slide. Fans will come to the game with pink lipstick and pink nails. If you're 14 and 0 in week 14 next year pink and they're 14 and 0, that'll be the hottest thing selling. I'll I'll probably get on Amazon and buy pink fingernail polish and be selling it to people in the great state of Illinois. But if you lose games, if you are not the elite quarterback that fans expect you to be. And we just have to wonder, I have never been in an NFL locker room. I have never been in a football locker room. I did not play high school football. Certainly I did not play college football. 
But will an NFL locker room tolerate this? We saw Michael Sam several years ago. How long did he last in the NFL? Different position. Certainly a different time frame as well. Although I don't think I don't think things change as much as people think they do. I think the LGBT community has a louder voice than they do 10 years ago. But I don't necessarily think between people's ears and in their brains, things have actually changed. So I am not buying this. I've heard he's he's a complete diva. Uh, I've talked to numerous people that follow college football a little closer. SC hasn't been one of the top, top teams, so I haven't followed him as closely. Certainly when I've seen him on the field, he looks great. He's got a great athletic talent to him. But Justin Fields is a great athlete as well. And it's all about you've got third and eight and you've got to complete that pass. Is the pink nail polish and the pink lipstick and the pink iPhone going to cut it? And we saw with how about that guy? How about that linebacker for the Chargers? Can't remember his name, but he like faked his girlfriend. There was a great Netflix uh, documentary on it as well. Like that mentally killed him. Like he was a great athlete. He was a great player. Being linebacker, I'm not going to say it's easier than being a quarterback. It might be equally as hard or harder, but just mentally, he was never able to get over that. And if people start giving Caleb Williams shit for whether he's LGBTQ, whether he's cosine cosa halfway, one way or the other, bisexual, whatever it ends up being, can he mentally get over that? Can he mentally get over that? Because I know if I'm the other team, this uh, that you are the if I'm the other team facing the Bears, the this is this is a one number one when you sack him when when anything you can do and say to him, this is top this is right at the top and you're telling the other people on the other team, you're telling the people that are supposed to block for him, supposed to run the ball for him, supposed to catch the ball from him. How confident are you really feeling when the big dude on the other side who's all jacked up on Royd Stew is telling you, hey, your quarterback's a little sissy boy? Are you really that? And, and you know it too. The guys catching the ball from Kalen Williams are going to know this. The guys blocking are going to know this. You know who? But in, you know who I, I'm worried about the people spending. I I put this picture up just just for people spending big money on his cards oh. or potentially here pretty soon. You, maybe you should load up on the pink parallels because <laughs> I yeah. I I, I don't really care w what what he does. But like you said, the quarterback is a is a huge position. There's a lot of pressure behind it, and there will be a lot of money quote invested into his cards. And if he's more worried about other things, his shade of nail polish, the lip gloss on a man is 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 kind of a first for me. I mean, I've even seen eyeliner on men. I've seen, you know, men really kind of push the envelope on, you know, what was acceptable back in the 90s when we were, you know, uh, in Stockton. The 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 pink lipstick is a, is a move. So, it's a move. I just I, I think people you know, should be aware of or what they're investing in. And we certainly, you know, look very closely at pictures of men and women. And we've got some influencers here in a little bit. We've got 10 pictures of influencers to dissect. Oh, they're, they're going to be they're, pumping this guy to, to the sky. This is the next, this is the guy. This is the guy. So they I love to some of him the, to do well. Some of the comments in the chat, somebody said he's going to be the new face of Bud Light. So, I mean, you know, you, <laughs> He has some uh, sponsorship opportunities. So I'm sure we'll be talking about Mr. Caleb Williams uh, much more in the future. Absolutely. I did want to make people aware of a situation with a trimmed Steph Curry card oh, that used to be in a BGS 8 holder, actually. So this card was purchased at a card show by a pretty popular Instagram account called Bridgeport for the hobby anyways they sold this card to somebody roman sports cards quite a few months ago and when roman sports cards received the card 
he noticed kind of some a dent in it. He noticed that it wasn't quite, you know, in perfect condition. So he kind of wanted his money back. They went back and forth. Anyways, Roman Sports Cards decided, well, F it. I'm just going to send it to PSA. And PSA said, hey, there's evidence of trimming. And so they they don't slab cards that have trimmed trimmed on it. Roman Sports Cards circled back to Bridgeport Hobby and was like, hey, this is a trimmed card. Bridgeport Hobby, I think, was trying to blow them off. We got tagged into some posts. And I think because of that, it does look like a refund will be issued for this card. And Bridgeport Hobby will be, I think, I think 2000 this is a $2,000 card. Bridgeport Hobby is going to take this card back into their possession. If I were them, I would just send it back to BGS and put it back in a BGS 8 holder. So just to make people aware that, one, these grading companies, you know, their standards aren't the same. You could send one, you could send a curry card to one grading company, it'll come back trimmed. You could send it to the next grading company, it'll come back in 8, 9, or 10. I did, so, and this is a card, all the 2009 Curry stuff from Tops. most of that stuff's been trimmed. Bunch of that stuff has been trimmed. And so if you see it in a BGS holder, assume that it's likely been trimmed. So this was kind of percolating yesterday. I wasn't quite sure if Bridgeport Hobby was going to issue the refund or not, but it does look like they will issue the refund. So certainly be careful if you're buying cards on Instagram, if you're buying cards, you know, not on a marketplace where you can go back and say, for instance, on Golden or something, or I guess Mercari now, <laughs> or eBay or one of these sites where you can go back to the marketplace and get a refund. Here, you actually have to tag Sports Card Radio on a post and you might be able to get issued a refund. I did think it was interesting that one of the employees at the hobby shop has on two occasions took it upon himself to post on social media that sports card radio is a racist this dating back to last year you posted a you bought a luka Doncic card for 271 dollars, which actually seems like a pretty good deal and this guy who worked at this hobby shop that sold the trim card says imagine buying card from a racist well he wasn't done just six months later, it's like still on his mind. Didn't have the racist morons from Sports Card Radio going to war with Jason A.R. Ardick on my agenda for today. But here we are. So I just kind of want, I just wanted to point that out that that, you know, probably one of the reasons why we were able to get a refund for this particular buyers because we've had a run-in it looks like with this particular gentleman calling us a racist what what are your thoughts about being the biggest racist in the sports card hobby <laughs> well i mean uh look the, I, I think under, under that context i think we were making fun of uh luca's race which i think you could categorize as being white I, I don't listen to rap music and say, man, every time they no, drop no, that no, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. No, no, no. He's calling us a racist because we compared Sasha T's physical appearance to Osama. Bin oh, Laden. it goes Let back to that. that. Oh, goes, goes back, back to, to that. that. Goes back to that. So your thoughts Look. on being a racist. People can say, people can say I think whatever they want. I I really don't care. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, at the end of the day, I think everybody has. I think everybody can make their own decision on on whether somebody's a racist or not, and whether that offends them or not. I'm a big boy. I wake up every morning. I put my big boy pants on. If somebody says something bad about me, says something about my friends, says something about whatever, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, it's it, it, it's 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 whatever. This vile autographs guy, vile graphs, whatever his name is, he's a nobody. He's he's a scrub. We don't even know what he looks like, but he's a scrub. And if somebody looks like o Osama bin Laden, and we say that. It might actually be true. 
this is so a, this I, I don't is, really th- care. This is actually a fantastic segue because I mean, I, I, I was not aware that in 2001 that Tops made a card of Osama bin Laden. But it does kind of raise, kind of transition over to these influencers. And we've had a lot of fun with the top set of people showing them for the better part of a year. Jeff Wilson, Card Collector 2, Slab Stocks, Mama Breaks, Slab Strong, the guy with the hat. We got five new influencer cards. Would you rather pull a card of one of these influencers? Value notwithstanding. Okay, they're all worth the same. Let's say they're all worth the same. Would you rather pull a card of one of these influencers or Osama Bin Laden? Oh my God. I I don't I don't think it's I'd rather pull okay out of the influencers. I think we can rank them. Okay. I think you obviously have to put breaks with Jess at, at the top. I think you'd you'd rather pull a picture of a woman than a picture of a man. When yeah. it's not an athlete and when it's not uh, Caleb Williams or a super, the next superstar athlete in the NFL. I think our man, Dr. Collectible, got to go with him. Looks Wait, like we got he, two feet. We got two females. Are, are we ranking the females? Oh, I'm talking about this year's class. I'm not talking okay, about this all, year's like, class. Oh, okay. I thought we were all done. These guys are old news. These are guys are like news. last year's quarterbacks. Last year's, you know, like nobody cares about these guys anymore. Like they're old new. It. It's all about the okay. new rookie class. So the bottom five is the new rookie class. Breaks okay. with Jess is definitely kind of the number one pick, the one that you absolutely want. I think her picture okay. is probably the best, although the fact definitely. that she has her arms folded around the tops jersey kind of blocks out the tops, whereas everybody else you can kind of clearly see the tops. And so, but I do like her background. I do like the other guys' background. Dr. Collectible, very close second. I think we agreed the fact that uh he was picked up on some kind of uh, some. He has a mug shot out there in the wild. I think he probably makes it. You know, if you were to go out with him on a Friday night, he'd actually be looking to have fun. Unlike the other three, whereas Jabs would probably just be rather. He'd rather be in front of his stream, fondling pictures of men doing nothing interesting. Striker breaks. I have no idea who that guy is. The cowboy hat. I'm not a huge fan of. And the Chai City pulls. Well, I'm not really sure about him anymore. He just, he called himself Chai City Poles, and now all of a sudden he's he's turning his back on his city and he's running to Las Vegas. Like when you moved to Vegas, it's not like you ditched, it's not like you you turned your back on Stockton. It's not like you started, instead of putting Nate Diaz, you started putting, I don't know, famous athletes from Vegas, like Chris Bryan or, or Bryce Harper or something. Like it's not like you switched allegiance. You know what I mean? Like you were still wrapping the 209 even when you even when you move. Mr. Chai City Pull, man, opportunity awaits in a new city, a new environment, and this guy packs up and leaves. So not a huge fan of that. Not a huge fan of his city. Not not a huge fan of his card. The photo's a little washed out, in my opinion. But yeah, I mean, I'm absolutely down with with the mama or not mama breaks, the breaks with Jess. I mean, I think we have a new, we have a new contender for favorite female breaker here on on Sports Road Radio. Breaks with Jess might have just popped out. Mama breaks, and Doctor Collectible. I think he he needs to needs to come to the two hundred nine, and we need to hit the uh, hit the captain's anchor. I posted this on Twitter and got uh, an unbelievable amount of responses to okay. this. I thought a few of I thought one of them was funny. I think h- half the people tried to pretend like they didn't know who any of these people were. And then you know, you get posts like this which just, you know, kind of indicative of the sports card world. And I don't think I'm being trolled here at all. This comes from Max Collects Mets. Jab's family is great and he uploads daily content on YouTube. He's also just an extremely nice guy who is a big family man. Colin, you knew about that, that Jabs is just the biggest family man in the hobby. (laughs) And, and... A broken family man. (laughs) This is the part I love the best. And involves his kids and his wife in most videos. I like that a lot. It's it's always feel-good, wholesome content. I'm happy to see him get recognized. And again, people might think I'm getting trolled here. No, 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 no. 
th this Max Collects Mets is like 50% of the hobby. Just completely fucking brain dead when it comes to some of these people in the hobby. Jab's family, he has a lot of things. He does upload daily content. It is probably good. He might be an extremely nice guy. To call him a big family man <laughs> when it, it is alleged that his wife broke up with him because of his addiction to sports cards. And it is, is it is at least alleged that he also kicked out the family dog because it was barking during breaks. I think to call him a big Jabs family, a big family man is a bit of a stretch. What, what are your thoughts about Jabs family? I mean, hey, if anything, Jabs family, he's marketed himself really good. It's the feel good, wholesome content when... I, I'm not, I, I think if you peel back the onion, I don't know if that's totally the truth, totally the truth about anybody, but maybe Jeb's family in particular. I mean, I'm not convinced that dude wasn't trolling there, but, um, uh, I, I mean, that's, the, that's the hobby we live in again in, in what, two weeks, three weeks, whenever the NFL draft is, it, it's going to be Caleb Williams party time guys. Even though when he walks into the locker room, there's going to be half of the guys that ain't swinging P Diddy's way. That are not going to be a fan of what what he's got going on here. <laughs> that you know what I mean? Like, there's literally going to be people on his team that is in charge of blocking and catching the ball from him that are not P Diddy, that are not rocking the P Diddy lifestyle, that aren't going to be liking this, that might actually be completely turned off by this. So, but there, everybody in the hobby is going to be like, oh, Caleb Williams, guys. Oh, oh, forget your 30K that you dropped on Mac Jones. Forget about that, guys. That's that's just unfortunate. For, forget everything that you dropped into uh, all the other quarterbacks over the past few years that are not named uh, Burrow or Mahomes or Purdy. Because re really, like, how many quarterbacks over the past couple of years like actually sell for good money? Like four? There's like four of them, five of them, maybe. There really aren't that many. So, I, I mean, that, that, that's just the hobby that we live in. Thankfully, it's not. I, I wouldn't say it's the broader hobby, but, you know, it does work for tops. Tops does see stuff like that, and they and they do believe it. They do believe this. In the heart of hearts, tops believes that Jabs is a good family man and that uploading content to YouTube daily is like a really special thing. We, we can name like 10 people off the top of our head that upload to YouTube. Thank you, Google, because it's free to actually do that. Believe me, if it actually cost you something money-wise to upload to YouTube, you had to actually pay for like the server load, that 90% of these guys would be gone. But Jabs does it because he has a Patreon and people pay him to do it. If you stop paying him to do it, he, he probably would, uh, you know, be hanging out with his, uh, with his jobs family a little bit more. Question. I got a question go. for you. Okay. Got a question. I mean, this hobby, you know, you, you know, you're kind of here today, gone tomorrow. So we're probably already thinking about next year. Who should get a, we have 10 people who've gotten a card already. 10 hobby heroes. Who, who should get a card i want to i want a female and a male i want a female okay. and a male okay you think so get a card? I, I think our our boy c blaz i'd like to see him on a card i think he'd be great on a card i know okay. he's kind of like dipping into the sports betting a little bit more look like he's carving out himself a nice career over in the in the sports betting gambling kind of thing uh so i appreciate what he does like his stuff i i think our our uh the um miss rips i think miss rips certainly deserves a card she has been involved in this community for a while she certainly could have left the community when she when she uh, you know she was with backyard breaks and i don't know what happened there but she's obviously no longer with them she could have gone on and done something else uh no she's still in this hobby and still i see her regularly posting and and constantly posting so I, i'd like to see miss rips with the with the card so i think we could get c blast and we could get sarah on a card and i think that would be that would be quite lovely i think that would be quite lovely as well so i'll co-sign on that 
Are you excited? Are you excited about it? A, 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 who do you think is going to sell for the most money? I mean, it's whoever is in there propping up the price because I don't know the price. Okay. I can't off the top of my head. I'm not a buyer of the previous five, but my guess is the previous five, they're not selling for a lot of money. Am I, am I wrong there? Like these cards are not selling for hundreds of dollars. I think, like, I think they top, of they kind of, they, they kind of max out at about a, like Jeff might sell for about a hundred. Some of okay. breaks breaks with Jeff's early cards sold for about a hundred and, and uh, car collector too about the same amount of money. Somebody like the slab strong guy, 20 bucks. Yeah. So we're, we're not talking about huge money. I think initially it's whoever's in there propping up their own prices. I could definitely okay. see. It's kind of like people that like maybe hit refresh on their YouTube videos to like get the view count up or hit the like button on their own videos or mm. retweet their own tweets. I know a journalist who did that. I know okay. a journalist who retweeted his own tweet. We're going to talk about him in a minute. So yeah, okay. I know what you're, so I, I, know what you're talking I, I about. I certainly can see Jobs. Fam Jobs family just seems like the type of guy that would bid on his own stuff that would try to drive the price, want his card to be the valuable Dr. Collectible seems like to me a guy that, oh, I got a card, but I got this honey hitting me up on my cell phone. So I'm going to go hang out with her. So um, everybody else, I don't really have a strong read on. I don't really know the Chai City guy. I don't even know who Striker Breaks is. So I, I don't have a, a read on them. But Jab's family certainly seems like a guy that would sit there and bid on his own cards, would tell his followers to bid on the cards like would tell his ex-wife to bid on the cards. Like it'd be very important to jabs for his card to be worth something. I think. Okay. That's very interesting. Yeah. Whoever has the biggest ego, I guess their card will be worth the most. Yeah. So that's why and jabs, I think out of, these, I think out of these five jabs clearly has the biggest ego. His fans have an ego for him. So you got to imagine his ego is pretty big too. His, I mean, yeah, if you say something bad about Jabs, man, they come full force. Like, they, they yeah. he, he's got the Jabs army. army. They, like, they come after yeah. you full force. Like, they're this. the yeah, ones we defending. Know. We know this right. firsthand. You say I mean, we kind of have an army now, too. So, I don't, I don't, you know, like, I don't. Used to be that we did not have the army. You could say whatever you wanted about sports card radio. And nobody cared. <laughs> uh, and everybody would just pile on. But now we actually have people that actually are a part of the army, so we appreciate that. Yeah, so yeah we have that. We have an army. We have we, the chat is 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 always fired up, and I think when they get five new influencer cards, I mean, aside from Jeff getting indicted on PPP fraud, I mean, there's not a whole lot more things oh. that can fire you up than, than five of our favorite influencers getting tops cards so i i'm i'm actually i i wish they would do a whole set of influencer cards because man it would give us something to talk about and uh certainly something to look at on the show hey I let me look at some sports cards before we dive into the real journalism folks yeah michael Olawa candy these don't pop up every day god what am i gonna have to pay to win this Damn. That's a lot. I know. Whoa. They don't come up every day. This Tiger Woods card's kind of interesting. I think I had a price that was lower than this. Like I said, you, it, it, you're battling with the repackers. Stuff's going for full retail these days. You're battering. Yeah, I, I'm sure the repackers are on, on this website right now, bidding yeah. stuff up and to, to put in their repack products. Because, yeah, sometimes you can get on Golden and these other auction sites. I mean, there's 3,000 listings tonight. You think they're all going to end at, you know, top, top comp? Absolutely not. So there's deals to be had. Doesn't look like deals to be had on the, at least the cards that I was looking at or I was watching. I think I'd bid on a half dozen Charizard cards. So I, I'm dipping into the Pokemon stratosphere. But that was but popular are... at the card show. Not, not to deviate topic too much, but... Yeah, the Pokemon was really popular. My kid's kind of into Pokemon. I, I wouldn't say he's like into it. He just likes to get the packs and open them. Um, but 
you know, the Pokemon was really big at the card show. There was a lot of booths. They had a lot of activity. Um, obviously, they've been making Pokemon cards for a really long time. The old ones sell, the new ones sell. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But um, yeah, I think it's a sell. I think we're a little bit more into seller's market. Not that you're getting like 2021 prices for your stuff. But I, I certainly think that we're into we're into the market where, hey, if you wanted to sell some stuff, it's kind of like the stock market too. There are times when the stock market's down and nobody cares about it a little bit. And and that's when you're in there buying. And then there's times when NVIDIA is up 9 million percent and all these other stocks have kind of followed it. And you take a couple of chips off the table. I wouldn't I wouldn't blame any collector out there for taking a couple of chips, not putting your whole collect. These guys are, oh, it's my whole collection. Th those guys, you know, th those guys are, were fraud from day one. But if you have a card or two that you want to sell, like I, I, like now's not the worst time just from the vibes that we're getting at the shows with the repackers, with the 85% comps, 90% comp. We know about 100, 110% comp. Golden's incentivizing people like 107%, uh, you know, 107, 107% hammer price. So clearly, you know, they're seeing that the market is, you know, that it, it's kind of one of these markets where the buyers are coming back. And so you kind of need the sellers to emerge. And, and yeah, I, I certainly would be out there, you know, with a, I wish I had a little bit more to sell. I just don't have anything right now that I want to sell a whole, a whole heck of a lot. So I did have a successful flip. This is my card. Um, I bought a portfolio on check out my cards that included a lot of soccer cards. And this card, I think tallied out to about, I don't know, $70 maybe or something total that I paid for it. So a lot of times what I'll do on car, uh, when I buy a portfolio, like on check out my cards, some of the cards I'll just auction off because, um, Sometimes you actually do pretty well on them. So I actually probably would have sold that card for actually less than $107.50. So as long as this gets paid for, um, I did pretty well. So we got a hundred more dollars to spend on something. Um, maybe, maybe they capped out at a hundred. That's what I, that's always, there people just type in a hundred people just type in a hundred. So if somebody wants to pay 150 for that, God bless them. Tiger Woods, we're going to be sitting here in five or 10 years, and that card's going to be worth more than $439. Yeah, that I'm pretty in two sure weeks. If, he, if he's feeling pretty frisky in two weeks, he's got a tournament that he could win. So people it's laugh. It's like than... the Masters, if Tiger Woods is going to win a tournament, it's going to be the Masters because the field is super reduced, and there's about half of the field that has no chance of winning. About half of the field has no chance of winning because they don't have the experience. They won't their their nerves won't hold up down the stretch, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You've seen it time and time again in the Masters. All the other majors are a different story. The Masters is its own game, and it 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 caters to experience. It caters to momentum. It caters to superstars, and and Tiger Woods certainly, obviously, is that. If he is going to win another tournament, it is it is a major tournament it is almost assuredly going to be the masters and and that is in two weeks so i know what i'll be doing in two weeks i will not be at augusta although i had i had vague hopes of going this year maybe next year i know what i'll be doing in a couple of weeks oh i'm i'm trying to win this card hanging out with livy dunn <laughs> yeah should we talk about hobby journalism please do Well, this week, Darren Ravel, who is allowed to call himself a journalism, because at least he's broken some some stories and some stories within the sports card world. So he's allowed to call himself a journalism. He's allowed to grift off the hobby, but we'll get into some of these other guys in a minute. Anyways, he's starting some kind of new venture, collect.com or however you want to say that. April 8th. Every week, millions of dollars are being spent on collectibles and memorabilia, yet there hasn't been a real media outlet to cover this asset class. That ends April 8th. For collectors, by collectors, invest yourself, dot, 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 in collect media. 
So kind of interesting, kind of taking a shot at some other people who have attempted to be media outlets in the sports card world. Uh, they probably, you know, read this and, and with a little bit of a snicker. But speaking of retweeting your own fucking post, Darren Ravel, like I said, Darren Ravel has broken some fucking stories. If he wants to come into this hobby and grift a little bit, I actually don't really care. It's guys like Will fucking Stern that piss me off. And I'm going to tell you exactly why. Why Darren Ravel can get away with it and why guys like Will Stern cannot. Here's his tweet. Apparently, he's going to be working on this little fucking website. The collectibles industry is worth $500 billion. I don't know where he gets that number, but maybe a real journalist can tell us. But it's ruled by creators and influencers firing off tweets on their lunch break. Time to bring legit journalism to the space. Join Darren Ravel and some other people nobody has ever heard of at Collect. And he ends it with, it's long overdue. You know what fucking, there's not, there's not that many things that actually piss people. This might surprise some people. There's not actually a lot of things that piss me off in this fucking hobby. You know what pisses me off? And when, when guys call themselves sports cards investors and they've never made a fucking penny buying and selling sports cards when somebody calls themselves a watchdog like card porn did and then he pulls off the biggest scam this hobby has ever seen last year when guys like the collectibles guru call themselves a guru and they've done nothing in this hobby aside sell their tw twitter account i could take it a step further what about the guy that called himself a therapist and then didn't pay for his Eli Manning card. So when you have guys calling themselves a journalist, they better at least have some cachet like Darren Ravel, who's broken a few stories. So if J Darren Ravel wants to call himself a journalist, if he wants to grift, if he wants to fucking make some money, fine. This guy is time to bring legit journalism to the space. This fucker's calling himself a journalist. What the fuck has he done? What hobby journalism has he done? Oh, let me show you guys. You know what his old job was? I bet most people don't know. I bet the 700 people watching don't know that Will Stern was the content manager for Rally Road. What's Rally Road? One of those fractional marketplaces where they'd buy fucking these stupid cards and chop it up 800 different ways. They'd buy this Pete Rose card and then sell it a thousand different ways and then sell shares of it. Here is his article on the one of the prized investments last year, Mickey Mantle's home in Norman, Oklahoma, the, the bustling real estate market of Norman, Oklahoma. Here's, here's Will Stern's con contribution to hobby journalism. Mickey Mantle's fucking home, hyping it for Rally Road. This guy was a, just marketing the fractional marketplace. So when guys... Like Will Stern, when guys who call themselves investors, gurus, journalists, therapists, watchdogs, let other people compliment you. Let other people give you those labels. So Will Stern, you, you've done nothing except promote fractional marketplace, the fractional investments in this space do not call yourself a fucking legit journalist until you actually produce some legit journalism am i being too hard on hobby hero will stern who looks like this by the way people call us racist we're the hardest on these white motherfuckers who come around and fucking i'm an investor i'm a watchdog i'm a guru i'm a journalist yeah i'm I a think journalist you know, earn it. Like, I, I don't like their approach of, oh, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Like, like, just show us guys, put out some content and show us, post some articles, post something, is. do something. Don't just come up and, and like, you know, it's one thing when you're an athlete and you're like, I'm going to score 40 and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Chances are you probably did it in college. You did it in high school. You might've done it in an NBA game here or there. And now it's the NBA finals and, and you're going to say you're going to do it. 
Okay, that's fine. Or you're like LeBron or Michael or Kobe or or Mahomes. It's okay if Mahomes week one or tomorrow Mahomes says, I'm going to take vacation and then we're going to come back and win the Super Bowl next year. All of us will just sit back and say, okay, okay, all right. You're probably going to do it. You're probably going to do it. But don't say, first of all, backhand the backhand your audience. Your audience is everybody's a creator these days. Everybody has a fucking social media account these days. And I got no problem with somebody that has a job and on their lunch break or after work or even during work. I don't care. Shit. I don't care. During work, you're bidding on cards. I, I'd be lying if I said I, wa I wasn't on a Zoom call at one time trying to bid on something. Okay. We've all been there. We've all done it. Okay. Everybody's a creator. If you want to call yourself an influencer, call yourself an influencer. I don't care. Stop saying that, like, like earn it. Post some shit to your website. Post something to the website. Get some SEO traffic. Get some traffic. Get an advertiser. Get a sponsor. Stop backhanding the industry saying, oh, well, it hasn't had this. It hasn't had this. It hasn't had that. Actually, it has, guys. I would I would say you look at like the blowout forums. You look at some of the stuff that goes on here on YouTube. You look at some of the stuff that a lot of the biggest stories in this hobby were actually uncovered by the person on their lunch break. And I think this just goes to something that we said last week is that so many people in this hobby treat their audience like they have an IQ of a Jabs family viewer. That they're not educated. That they can't think for themselves. That you have to have somebody like Darren Ravel tell you about this hobby. I guarantee you, everybody watching this knows more about the hobby than Darren Ravel does. Darren Ravel is, the, is, is right up there with Gary Vee and pumping. He was pumping his ticket stubs. He was just on the Jeff Wilson show. He has pumped type one photos. This guy pumps and pumps and pumps. And if you look at the first 30 or 40 accounts that collect media has followed. Newsflash, newsflash. They're not going to be independent. When he, the first sentence he says in his tweet right here with Darren Ravel, that is going to tell you right there. They're not going to be independent. They're going to be talking about the millions of dollars being spent on collectible memorabilia on the auction houses. Darren Ravel knows the phone number of all these auction house guys. He knows people with big collections. Will they be reporting on the trim cards? Will they be reporting on the fraud that happens in this industry? Would have they ever reported on card porn? Would they have reported on Gary Moser? Would they have reported on Evan Mathis? Would they have reported on Kurt's card care? That all remains to be seen. And if they do, that's great. I'm here for it. I'll be happy for it. And I think the hobby will be better for it. But stop talking about what you're going to do and just do it. Stop talking about being Please. a real journalist and just do it. Okay? Just do your job. If you want to be a journalist, be a fucking journalist. If you want to have a website that's successful, start posting articles to it. Why do you have to wait till April 8th? Put up some content today. It's not that hard. And the last thing I would do is make fun of the collectors and the people that support this hobby. The quote, creators and influencers out there. Everybody has their phone. Everybody is a... a Everybody can break news these days. Everybody can. That is one of the reasons why legacy media uh, is, is stagnating at best and is dying in reality is because everybody has a phone. Information flows a lot more freely than it does. You don't necessarily need a journalist to tell you what's up these days. You can look at the Otani story and draw your own conclusions. You can look at the Kurt's card care story 
and draw your own conclusions. You don't need Will Stern to tell you. And again, if you look at the first 30 accounts that they follow, Heritage Auctions, PWCC, Golden. I'm telling these guys, this is where this is who's going to pay these guys. Because they're not going to be doing this for free, okay? They're not going to be doing this for free. They're never going to say a bad word about a card on an auction house because that's who they're going to pay them. They're not probably not going to be talking about trimming, cleaning cards, because that's somebody that could potentially buy ad space on the website. So what, what are they actually going to add over? We have journalists out there, we'll put that in air quotes, at Beckett, at Sports Collectors Daily. I don't know what the status at Card Collector or not, uh, Cardboard Connection. Is that website back up or is that is that gone? I, that's a great question. Looks like maybe there's some activity. March well, 15th? No, two weeks ago. So yeah, it looks two like... Two weeks ago. Looks like maybe a couple articles a month now. But there's a reason why this website is gone. Because if you actually don't actually produce what the people want, you can put up all this stuff all day long and nobody's going to care. You can have all the advertisers in the world, 10 different banner ads on each page. Nobody's going to care. Nobody's going to care. And again, if you look at the first like 30 people that that collect media site followed on social media, and you think that they're going to produce like actual journalism, like you got to be kidding me. And the fact that they backhanded half of the collectors out there that will be potentially reading your stuff, you got to be kidding me. So much better strategy would have been, have been to call Sports Guard Radio Write us a check, and then you would have instant credibility. Well, yeah, so, since we are giving advice, a couple, couple things. Why, you know, one of the reasons why you don't see journalists in the hobby, one, you don't make any money from it. Two, you have to have access. And let me tell you what, the first thing you say something bad about Nat Turner and PSA, or the, <laughs> the, the, the first time you say something bad about Michael Rubin and Fanatics and Tops, your Bye-bye. access is gone and your stories are gone. And that that's yep. what Will Stern will figure out. There was a time where, yeah, I contacted Betsy Higgins uh, and PWCC about a particular story and, and they got back to me. And guess what? I wrote a negative story. You think PWCC and Betsy Higgins will ever return, unfortunately, ever return a DM, <laughs> a phone call about anything about PWCC? Absolutely not. It took me three weeks after my account got hacked to get my cards back from PWCC because they don't want to talk to me that much. So the reason why you don't see hobby journalism is because you have to have access and there's only if actually very few people you need access to one of the graders, which is Nat. And, and right now it used to be, well, you had somebody over at tops at Panini, maybe Brian gray would feed you some stories. No, those days are over. So if you piss off Michael Rubin, or if you piss off Nat Turner, your access and your stories are, are done. Your websites, your, your journalism is done, done, done. Right. So that's if one reason why trimmed you... cards. If you're talking about the trimmed cards in a slab on an auction house, you're actually backhanding the auction house and the grading company. So have fun doing writing that story up. So yeah, I, they're just I, not going to talk to you. Yeah. No, they're, they're not, not going to talk to you. Exactly. Now, if you do want to come out with some stories, I would highly suggest that you drop them on Thursday afternoon and we might talk about them on sports. That goes for anybody. If you got a big story in the sports card world, boy, it'd be really smart to drop that like Wednesday night or Thursday morning. And we might talk about that. We can go live anytime. We we go live anytime. We can go live anytime. That's true. We've just kind of locked ourselves into this Thursday time slot. If you look historically, like in, in a, a TV's heyday Thursday, at this time was uh, was the premier slot for Seinfeld friends and there's a reason for that it's True. because people have already started to wind things down on Thursday they look at Friday like ah 
I got all my work done gonna, for the week. If you're like me, I got tomorrow. First of all, most people have tomorrow or some people have. I hope you have tomorrow off. If you don't, that's unfortunate. But I have tomorrow off. I don't have anything to do. That's why I've, I've cracked the bottle of Velvet, Belvedere. We're moving into a holiday weekend. Uh, so you often have Fridays off sometimes. And then people tend to wind things down already thinking about the weekend on Thursday. Thursday tended to be back in the historical days, one of the top TV rating days of the week, because you're probably not going to go out to the club or the bar on the Thursday, but you are thinking about winding things down on a Thursday and having some fun at night, maybe staying up an extra hour, 30 minutes. And that's why TV ratings tend to be better. That's also why, you have Thursday night football. Thursday night is a terrible night for a football game, right? Because you, a lot of teams have just played on Sunday. But the reason why the NFL has a Thursday night football game is not because they want to play on Thursdays. They want to play on Thursdays because it's one of the most profitable days from a TV advertising perspective. And again, if, you, if you're old like us and you remember the days of Seinfeld and Friends, they were on Thursdays. So, yes, that is one of the reasons why we tend to air our show on Thursdays. So, yeah, I, yeah, I, I got no problem. There's websites popping up and there's websites dying off every single day here in the hobby. But what I don't like is earn your shit. Stop talking about, oh, it's time to bring some legit journalism. We'll be the judge of that. You're not the judge of that. The reader and the public is the judge if you are a legit journalist. Just because you are a semi-dressed, well-dressed white man doesn't mean that your journalism is good. Same thing with Jeff Wilson. Just because you talk like an investor doesn't mean you actually are. A tech, inv tech investors don't live in Georgia, guys. Newsflash, newsflash. No successful tech investor in, in, lives in Georgia. You know what is based out of Georgia? is like Home Depot. That's what's like the, the owner of the Falcons. He didn't make his money in tech. He made his money at Home Depot. Jeff Wilson is not a tech investor. Jeff Wilson is, is, a, is a biggest. I don't think we need to tell our audience this. This is one of the biggest frauds in the industry. Tells you he was an investor. Tells you he was this, that, and the other. Who's the young lady he has here? Who's this? He can't see. She used to be on the show with him, and then he oh, like kicked her out. I mean, was his ego hair. too big? Is was yeah, his she, like, ego too big? I I don't I don't know why he I don't know why he decided. I don't know why she's not on the show anymore. Okay, well, all right. Like get get a little female energy. Did maybe you she's see? Working. Maybe she's actually doing work. I don't know. Yeah, maybe she's actually doing shit. Did you see yeah. that Michael Rubin and the guy that Michael Mahan or whatever the CEO of the trading card yeah. business went? No, I saw this. Issue. And 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 Jeff says he's gotten a lot of support from Tops, which I think is 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 more than um more than fair and 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 more than worthy. He says he gets almost no support from Panini, which is which is not necessarily surprising, but it's interesting. But there was a Bloomberg article that actually came out uh, today. I don't know if you saw the headlines from that. It was a it was a story on Michael Rubin and Michael. What was interesting is Michael Rubin raised two billion dollars, two billion with a B, and he was going to go after the sports betting market. But then he realized you can't explore you can't exploit the sports betting market because you've got MGM, you got Fanduel, you've got you know it, 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 it's re from a regulation perspective. It's tough, tough nut to crack. The the sports betting market is a tough nut to crack. You know who the two people that told them to get into sports trading cards? Dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. So you had Gary V and Josh Luber told him he could exploit trading cards, and that's where he should put his money. And that is the reason why Michael wow. Rubin is standing in the shop at the very moment is actually because of Gary V and Josh Luber said you can exploit the trading card market. Number one, because of the companies involved are very sleepy, not very well run, which I would a hundred percent agree with. And number two, your audience, your customer will take a subpar product. They're not like a watch buyer. They're not like it. Maybe a luxury clothing buyer 
they'll take a subpar product. You can put out subpar products with missing redemptions, missing content, damaged cards, and they'll continue to be loyal to you, continue to simp for you. And you can create 10 influencer cards over two years. And now you've got a permanent for free. Like they didn't have to pay these people. None of these people are ever going to say anything bad about tops ever, ever. They're never going to whisper a bad word about tops. And so imagine once we're four or five years down the line, Ryan. Whew. And then look, they're going to put, they're going to give collect a couple thousand dollars a month. They're never going to whisper a bad word about tops ever. Okay. And same with the auction houses. They'll give uh, Darren Ravel a couple thousand dollars or whatever it is a month. They'll never whisper a bad word about him. That's smart. Think Jeff Wilson's ever going to say a bad word about tops ever. Sounds smart. So in a Sounds lot like of ways, my, my, yeah, in a lot of ways, Michael Ruma is very smart because the sports betting market has a lot of sharks and it's a difficult nut to crack, if you will. Whereas the sports trading card market, you can come in, throw around $2 billion and now you're the top guy and everybody's basically drops to their knees and licks your nuts out, whether you're Jeff Wilson or your media outlet run by Darren Ravel, they're going to be dropping to their knees. The minute this guy walks in the door, a real journalist looks at Ma Michael Rubin and says, well, what's he doing here? What's his angle? Is it good? Is it bad? Is what he he's doing more. good for the hobby? Is it good for the collector? Actually objectively looks at it. Whereas Darren Ravel will drop on his knees in two seconds. If Michael Rubin walks in the door, Darren Ravel drop on his knees in two seconds. Ken Golden walks through the door, drops on his knees. Jeff Wilson walks in the door. He shows up on it. Darren Ravel shows up on Jeff Wilson's show. Instead of objectively looking at his shop, ex objectively looking at his business, like a lot of people do here on YouTube, they just drop right to their knees. Oh, well-dressed white man who overspent on a, a trading card shop in the middle of nowhere. All due respect to the great city of Cobb County, Damn, Georgia. Shots fired. But it ain't Miami, yep. it ain't San Francisco, it ain't New York. So is this the what what came out of it for me when I watched this video is Jeff seems to think that this is very much the future of hobby shops, that other people should be copying him. Is this the future of, of hobby shops? The the Jeff Wilson model, the the six cabanas, the live well, 24 7, to, the to steal and borrow some content, to license some content from the great SCV sports cards is the market didn't ask for this. He's very right when he says, the guy actually says some very intelligent, largely a lot of uh, great advice on there. And I think he does it in his own style, which I, I, I obviously, we are obviously a huge fan of and we appreciate. But he's very, for a young younger guy, very, uh, that's actually a very intelligent statement. The market didn't ask for this. Now, there are times when you can be like Apple and the you could maybe argue that that the market didn't ask for the iPhone or the market didn't ask for something like this. But we're talking about devices that everybody w w would potentially own. We're talking about a single card shop in a single city. In a specific geographic location in the United States, the market didn't ask for this. The market doesn't need this. And in those cases. I don't think it's the blueprint. Are there going to be card shops of different sizes, different shapes, different colors, different, uh, you know, setups? Yes, of course. But did he need nine cabanas or eight cabanas or whatever it is? Did he need 14,000 square feet? Doesn't look like it to me. Looks like to me, there's more camera people there than there are customers. Got some and if you hovering. only have the support of top, if you have the support of tops, that is great because I think Panini is more or less a dead man walking at this point. But at some point, you need more more support in the industry than than one single manufacturer. 
Well, Jeff's not going to be the only, sh you know, shop that's going to be able to sell product and they're, they're going to move product too. So there's tons of other shops that yeah. move ton more product than Jeff Wilson does. Jeff's proud of himself in this moment. Uh, you know, I, I watched Michael Rubin in this video. It looks like he's ready to get out of there at any moment. So, I mean, I'm sure he's got bit, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe a Diddy party to go to or something. I don't know what, you know, he's got all kinds of different things yeah, going maybe. on. So I, again, I think it's interesting. Jeff is now, it looks like two months into his kind of debut of this card shop. We've yet to see them really debut kind of a full fledged online selling. I think they go live on whatnot and sell some cards, but we don't have a website that sells cards. We don't have, it was like 10 hours. people at the San Francisco show that did that. You know what I mean? Like everybody, yeah, that's everybody not a, came and bought cards from us was sold on whatnot. So it's sold not, on whatnot, not revolutionizing anything. Uh, he, he yeah, some, Jeff reminds me just of like the, the Darren Ravel and the max guy or whatever his name is. Like it's, it's like they talk this big game and it's like, just, just do it. Just do it. It's like somebody saying, oh, I'm going to become sports car radio and I'm going to have all these people watching my live and this and that. It's like, great. Do it. Do it. Stop talking about it and just do it. Stop talking about how great your shop is and actually have an e-commerce site that we can buy some cards. Like, well, did you actually did, do did it? You did you see in the video, Jeff's, they're, they're talking about, oh, well, when when does the second location open up? And I'm thinking to myself, like, have you have you proved the first location? You've been open two months. We've got Crickets HQ when we go to their live stream and their little breaker cabana, unless somebody famous is there. Have you Here, really the proved, proved the first location yet? Right. Give anybody $3 million, whatever this costs to build. We'll just say it's $3 million, $4 million, whatever, $3 million. I could give anybody $3 million to buy some HGTVs, to go find a place to lease, put some paint on the walls, and put some product in there. I can do, anybody can do this with $3 million. Anybody. Anybody. Anybody can open up a card shop for $3 million and have it look exactly like this. So he hasn't accomplished anything yet. He hasn't actually accomplished anything. And more often than not, you'd actually have an e a Shopify. Guys, Shopify is like the easiest thing to set up. You can have a Shopify, okay? Can we even buy on, can we buy on his website? We can't even buy. So he doesn't have a uh, back-end inventory system running. Anybody can get $3 million, buy some HDTVs, go find a logo shop, get some paint on the wall. Fucking the stupid, uh, the building owner will do most of it for you. The building owner will, will get the contractor in there and do this. Okay. Like I'm, I got like the room I'm sitting in is because I'm best friends with a contractor. Okay. Like if you know, a general contractor shit can get done. It, it just takes a little bit of money. So like actually show us something. Anybody can, it's just, it goes right to the collecting. Where everybody can say, I'm going to set up a website and I'm going to be a real journalist. Shut the fuck up and actually post an article that actually gets some clicks and gets some views. And that is actually different than what we've seen in this hobby. That is something that Beckett can't produce or, or Sports Collectors Daily or Cardboard Connection or any of the other, uh, you know, even you, you look here on YouTube, AIH Sports, Dan the Cardman, put something up. That is actually unique. Put something up that people actually want to consume. I think they're actually trying to convince themselves. Like to me, this is like almost like trying to convince themselves. Yeah, guys, this is a good idea. I don't know what we're going to write about. We sure as hell can't talk shit on PWCC. Can't talk shit on Michael Rubin. Can't talk shit on Tops. Can't talk shit on Panini. Can't talk shit on card trimming. Can't talk shit on Ken Golden. Can't talk shit on Jeff Wilson. But man, we'll, we'll, man, we'll do something. We'll bring some legit journalism to space. Even though we can't talk shit on anybody, we can't actually talk about stuff that actually needs to be investigated. But, but we'll do something. It, it seems to me they're trying to convince themselves this is a good idea. Otherwise, you would just put your head down and do it. You know what I mean? Like you would just, it, it's almost like the guy that's like a little, like maybe like 20 pounds overweight like me. Okay, 20 pounds. Like I could lose 20 pounds like yesterday. Okay. 
It would be like me being like, I'm going to get on the Peloton. I'm going to go to Planet Fitness. I'm going to lift weights every fucking day. Uh, and, and in and this summer, man, I'm going to go to Miami Beach and I'm going to look like fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger. Shut the fuck up and get on the Peloton. Start fucking lifting the weights. Eat healthy and lose the weight. Or get Ozemic. Stop <laughs> okay. fucking talking about it and just do it. Say, and it reminds me the same thing of Jeff Wilson. I'm going to spend $3 million on a shop. I'm going to buy some HGTVs, get a general contractor. Like, I'm more impressed with the general contractor. You know what I mean? Like, he got this done in, like, what, eight months? Like, that's not that's not that <laughs> easy to do. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And, and if you're Michael Rubin and you just spent $500 million on tops and he's probably spent another $500 million since then on this shit, and Jeff Wilson comes walking through the door, of course you're going to be a buddy with him. Of course he's going to be your buddy. He's out here blowing money like it's it, it's it's a PPP loan. Stop talking about what you're going to do and just do it and start delivering. That's what the hobby wants. They're tired of people saying, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be a breaker. I'm going to do this. Just start delivering for people. The reason why we come here every single week on a Thursday and we can draw one of the largest audiences as a hobby is because we try to deliver for these people. Now, are some shows better than others? Absolutely. Are some weeks we've, we're blessed with topics like Kirk Cards Care or a breaker dipping or this, that, and the other. Yeah. So there's going to be some weeks that are better. And God bless everybody that's showing up tonight, considering it's opening night for baseball. It's a Thursday night. Tomorrow's a holiday. Everybody that I was talking about is going camping or going somewhere for the weekend, this, that, and the other. God bless you guys. Have I hope you guys are having a great day and having fun with your lives. So we appreciate everybody that's tuning in. But certainly here at Sports Car Radio, we're not going to be talking about like, oh, we're going to be. We gonna be bigger than Jeff Wilson here in 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 a month. You know what I mean? Like, come on, just do it. That's the thing. That is the thing that rubs me such. such I wrote down investor, watchdog, guru, journalist, therapist. We've literally had people in this hobby call themselves these things. And this is a new phenomenon. Prior to 2019, 2020, you couldn't come into this space and call yourselves that because you would get called out by the very small community that it was. You'd get, people would see right through it. But there's so many no, new people into this hobby. Similar to this comment about Jab's family. So many more people into this hobby now. That they'll believe anything that comes out That's of Jeff great. Wilson's mouth. They'll believe anything that comes out of Jab's family's mouth. They'll believe anything that comes out of Will Stern's mouth. Even though the only thing he's done in this hobby is be a content creator for a fucking website. That's a fucking grift. But that's a fail site. hasn't made anybody any money. That's a fail site. Rally, collectible, dibs. Literally could all go out of business tomorrow. And nobody They've would already come out of business. Collectible already went out of business. Dibs, the, the one Jeff fucking ran already went out of business this site has to liquidate shit every other day yeah they're trying to rent out the mantle house for 200 dollars a day good luck doing that in <laughs> norman oklahoma literally the house behind it is worth like 50 grand and you can yeah. rent it for and like then airbnb takes uh, airbnb takes 30 <laughs> percent. so so that's a great investment for the i mean fractional real estate has been tried before and it, it doesn't work it doesn't work Buy stocks, buy Bitcoin if you want to fuck with that. <laughs> buy a REIT, yeah, or something, yeah. Buy, buy fucking. Buy the whole card. Buy the whole Look damn card for fuck's sake. No, I got out. Look at God you. damn it! Really? I got outbid. I'm That's telling nice. you, it's a seller's market right now. When Michael Ola Candy PSA sevens guys for are going for forty-six, 46. Guys, God. it is time to sell some cards these days. I have some stuff over here. I'm thinking about sending in to somebody. I don't God. really want to sell it myself. I've got some F1 Chrome boxes that I might. I have a Rolex I have my eye on, so, and I don't have thirty five thousand dollars. So, <laughs> I was trying to calculate how much do I need to sell to get thirty five thousand. I don't think I really have a few it, more. So. A few more Michael Candy cards. That's for sure. 
Do you want to go to questions? These 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 guys in the chat. I mean, you know they've got something to yeah, say about these influencers. We're just grateful. Yeah, cards. yeah, we're grateful for everybody that's shown up. Again, you got baseball, you got basketball. Just appreciate it. Brian Bayless heard the driver of the boat that smashed into the bridge spilled Kurt card care. Oh no! <laughs> All over the wheel trying to shine up his cards oh, and couldn't boy. get the grip oh boy oh boy that would be that would be tragic for kurt's card care the truth comes um out. yeah I, I i tell you what if you're kurt's cards care man i don't necessarily think you you're you're clear of any kind of legal liability at some point you know i think you know you got to be a little to me i, I would be you know, I think he gets sued. Little, I, I, I'll bet yeah. anybody wants to take action on this. Maybe we'll, we'll ask Otani how he can get a bet down on this. Somebody ask Otani or Otani's interpreter how to get a bet down. I bet Kurt's card care. He's either going to get sued by yeah. um, PSA or one of the grading companies, or he's going to get sued by one of his customers because this isn't going right. to work right all the time. He doesn't list the or ingredients, damage which the is actually, or something. He doesn't list the ingredients, which is probably against state regulate. It's some uh, we're in California. I guarantee he he's not legal. <laughs> if it quote, causes legally, cancer, yeah, he's screwed. <laughs> he's not legally allowed to sell this product in California if they actually looked at it. Right. My guess is Kirk's card care ends up in a courtroom. He's gonna get sued. That's my guess. He's he's exposed himself to all this legal liability. He's become big, he's become yeah. the face of card alteration. And fraud in a lot of ways. So my yeah. guess is he ends up in a courtroom civilly, right? Uh, right. Sooner or later. Yeah. So the two That'll questions I have: number one, will collect? Will Darren Ravel cover this topic? Probably not. Um, number two, and maybe this is the first topic they cover, which would be amazing. Um, number two, Sports Card Radio has been threatened with a lawsuit, not once, not twice. Not, not three, not four, not five. Uh, multiple times we've been threatened with a lawsuit. So I got to imagine Kirk Card Care is next. And some of these guys fold when that lawsuit threat comes. Sports Card Radio, we grab our crotch and then we talk about how we're in your wife's DMs. I don't know if Kurt is cut out of the same cloth as Sports Card Radio. We'll certainly I would, see because he's it, going against on, it. On that topic of us getting sued, I would encourage all the content creators who we're going on a year. Jeff Wilson threatened to sue Sports Card Radio. It was December 2022. So we're wow. going on a year and four months ago. I would encourage all the content creators out there who had hot takes saying that Jeff had the Jeff, gosh, we had to, we were going to have to hire a lawyer and Jeff had this big case against us and we better lawyer up and we better god we're gonna go broke i would encourage all the content creators it's been guys it's been 15 months do a follow-up video why has jeff not sued sports card radio and actually yeah. you could actually go to sports card radio read the document and see all right. the lies lies right that people bought right. yeah stop taking what these predominantly white men say to you at face value right. when they call themselves a journalist don't believe it when they call themselves an investor don't Make believe it. it when they call themselves a fucking watchdog don't believe it right please please that's it's, the only it's, thing it's that like a seven foot black man coming in the door and being like he's in the nba well certainly looks like he could be in the nba but make him prove it make him prove it same thing with these white guys Make them prove it. And yeah, like you said, Jeff Wilson outright lies, outright lies, lies in the lawsuit document. And just people didn't understand the law. We we actually under, like, believe it or not, we understand the law here at Sports Car Radio. Not because I'm a lawyer, but, uh, you know, you don't got a, a membership at a country club and a couple of Rolex and don't know a few lawyers that are willing to do you a favor every once in a while. Will Greyer investor saying that there is $4 and 50 cents. Whoa, wait a second. There's $4 and 50 cents missing from his bank account. Ryan took it to buy Will Greyer. Ryan. Guilty. 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 
I, I just love that people give us Will Grier cards. We've gotten gifted. We've got dope more Will Grier cards. cards than anybody. These are yeah. These aren't even the nice ones that I have. These are like the common <laughs> ones that I have. <laughs> Although this one's number to this is a rookie number to five. So that one's kind of dope. Beautiful. So Charles T says a Livy Dunn game used patch card would sell for Ooh. more. Ryan, would you? Could you imagine? There's probably. I'm going to go down a real slippery slope here, but it's pretty late in uh -oh. the show. Uh -oh. You know how like on, uh, <laughs> you know, how like, like on certain athletes, like the Nike swoosh or the chief's logo, or certainly a piece of the last name sells mm. for more. Could you imagine there are areas of her leotard there that would sell for more on a patch card? I'll leave that question to you. I, I would imagine. Yeah. She, whatever she's getting for her autograph, Boy, this girl could make a lot of money selling all kinds of different things. So, but just at home, just, sure. just, just literally at home. So, sure, she could sure. do no problem. We're not I talking bet. like OnlyFans. We're just talking, you know, some you know. items, like items or whatever. <laughs> sure, I guess there's a market. There, the, hey, there's there's a market for pictures of men. There's a market, I guess, for this yeah. guy Caleb Williams cards. So there, there, there's a market. There's a market for everything. Oh. That's the new hobby, Golden Boy, right there, guys. Literally, this is, this is the hobby, Golden Boy, next right. year in the NFL, guys. This is literally, it. this is it. This is it. This is who they're going to. I don't know. I don't know what better thing to do right now than to go out and buy Pat Mahomes, Joe Burrow, and, and Joe, Montana. Uh, Ma Joe Montana. There you go. Fair enough. Because those are the only guys, in my opinion, that have showed they have a nutsack between their legs. But I'm biased on one of them, obviously. Mahomes actually has stuff on his fingers to prove it. Ferris Sterling says, did you see the, the genius that plopped an auto card into Kurtz and then the auto disappeared? It was like <laughs> the old spy movies with disappearing ink. The auto disappeared like his soul. I don't know if he's being for real, but. <laughs> seems to me i would be? not want to dip one of these auto cards in in any of this juice there you go look at this look at this guys there you go in it out is, look at that this is, this is the hobby right here let me right do here, some journal let me do some journalism on this what the fuck is that juice somebody test that juice so the thing is, is darren ravel likes this shit like this is the kind of stuff d ravel likes he's got these cards he wants it juiced he don't Lord care. Have mercy, Lord have mercy. That can't be good, guys. That cannot be good. That no can't be fucking good. way. That's good. Like, what is he trying to get out on the? I guess there's like gum a circle. stains. Gum, gum stains. stains. Isn't gum stains like a? Look it almost that. be like a fingerprint from uh, Da Vinci or something. You want to like buy gum a card? Stains to me? No, I mean no. Look no. at that. It's fucking soaked. <laughs> this is the hobby guys this is the hobby look, and thank look, god we have got a real fucking towel covering. thank god in in april guys we have journalists covering this because this this will clean this up wait there's there's they're not, they're, he's not like done with this Ooh. card what are these fucking clamps seems to me look. like okay if he was making a region like i i probably make a little too much money um like I, I make a fair amount. If you look at my hourly wage, it's it's a lot. Like if you had to pay him an hourly wage to do this, like a reasonable one, where you're making like you know we'll say four or five hundred thousand dollars a year, like would this even be worth it? Like would this even be worth it if you had to if you were making a quarter million, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand? You're cleaning 000, the right cards. If you're I, cleaning the I, right I don't cards. Know, though. I don't know though. This is not Wayne Gretzky he's cleaning. He's cleaning like a second, like a fifth year hockey player. Dave Christian. Well, you who the hell is that? You show, you show people how to do it and then you sell these That's kids. True. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Christine. I think we, we could just come on here and just react to these videos like that. that this is <laughs> well, we have the second channel. Yeah, I would. I would do like reaction video. I thought about there was a video I thought about today. I'm drinking a little too much Belvedere to remember what I what I thought of. But I had a video in mind. 
I almost did it, but I didn't. Anyways, Christine with the five dollars. You never discriminated against me. I'm allowed to strip. Christine, you're more than yes. welcome to come on Sports Day Radio at any time and strip. Yeah, might have to put that behind a paywall though, and we'll we'll uh, we'll equally distribute the profits to you. Yeah, I agree. Thank you, Christine. Loyal fan of the show. We appreciate your support, and we are enjoying following your journey in this hobby, and I mean that sincerely. AIA Sports, thanks for the shout out. Anytime, anytime we can drive. And I don't like to take credit for shit, okay? But I will in this moment. But anytime we can uh, be like, I don't like to do drugs, but when I'm in Vegas. Um, uh, you anytime I can. No, no, I don't. No, believe me, I don't. And then that's for real. I would never done that and never would. I took a drugs in an athletic environment class in college. And if you take that and see what happens to your brain when you I'm are scared, on the white there, powder, huh? you will never, ever, ever, ever touch that stuff. Ever. Yeah, but ever. if if Livy if Livy Dunn tr- if, if Livy Dunn tried to give you a bump, you know you'd be you'd be taking it. I mean, if Levy Dunn had ever done anything to me, I would obviously be, be like let's do that. this first let's do this i would first. be like i have a lovely wife and it's my 10 year anniversary coming up so thank you livy that's correct i do have a twin brother i would just pass her on to the single twin brother. good looking out that's really good looking out just pass her right on i know you could do like a videotape and now would certainly go viral and be worth a lot of money and you could split the profits with me aih thank you you put up great content anytime i can Shout that out and get you five extra views. It is my pleasure. Lyrical thesis, DJ. Please, can I mix the song for you guys? Of course. Yes. Anybody that is out there that is that is a DJ, certainly uh, B-Side sent his beat to us for free, okay? We're certainly on a pretty li- limited budget here at Sports Guard Radio. We're building on Michael little candy cards. So uh, you can imagine uh, we're, we're not... Uh, we're not strapped with uh, extra cash over here. So yeah, anybody that wants to like make a beat, we'll put it in. And and if it helps you in any way, music business is tough. I'm not breaking any news there. So any, yeah, Lyrical DJ, thanks for the $1.99. Anything you send to us, we'll use in a video or something like that. Da Juice Maine says, do you guys think since Bitcoin is back up, it'll cause prices? Well, I think Bitcoin certainly has risen. You've got the stock market at all-time highs. Real estate hasn't dropped. It, uh, credit markets to borrow money and stuff like that is, is not super loose, but it's not super tight. The, the labor market's great. If you need a job, if you're willing to work, you can probably find one. All of these things are contributing to cards uh, being relatively hot. I know AIH Sports and other economists out there are uh, assuming or projecting that maybe the back half of the year is a little tougher. We don't need to get into a deep economic discussion on today's show, something that certainly can materialize. But with Bitcoin at 70K, certainly frees up some extra cash in the hobby. It could be a proxy for higher card prices as well. Although if you look, Car prices certainly aren't back to where they were. And I think you can look at the Connor Bedard as well. I think it was up at eight, nine hundred when it first launched. I think that card is now selling for Check. closer to four or five hundred. So um cards go up and down. Needless to say, breaking news here at Sports Card Radio. Queen City cards with the dollar ninety nine. Queen City cards is in the house. We appreciate your loyal support. Thank you, Queen City Cards. SCR number one. We all know that, baby. Jason Moran of the five dollars. It must have been fun for Jeff to have Jeffy to have an actual real life billion dollar business mogul in Cards HQ. <laughs> and the one he portrays on you. Yeah, so Jeff portrays himself as the billion dollar mogul, but uh we all know Mike Rubin is actually the Duh. the real, the real, or is actually is his wife. His wife might be the multi-million dollar mogul. Um yeah, Jeff is good at spending money. Again, I can give anybody a $2 million PPP loan. 
I can give anyone $3 million and have you do what Jeff does. Okay. That that's not, that's not revolutionizing the hobby. That's not good for the hobby. That's none of those things. That's called spending money. Can he talk well on camera? Does he have good camera presence? Does he have good communication skills? Absolutely. That's a strength of his. I think he went to the University of Florida. Ambition. Could be wrong with that. He, oh, he has fantastic ambition. I wish I had his ambition. Me too. Okay. So there's certainly some positive traits about Jeff Wilson. Absolutely. Absolutely. Is he a narcissist? Is he good at spending other people's money? Guys, he might be he might be the Patrick Mahomes of spending other people's money, including the government's. Wait a minute. So we we, we saw old Curdy kind of cleaning up cheaper cards. This is a 19 fucking 51 Bowman Mickey Mantle rookie that is submerged in the juice over here, guys. Like, what the fuck? Do you want that card? Oh my to me, like it, what how can a grading company get this card? What the and fuck? have it not appear to be too good to be true? What? It's like a coin from the 1950s. A coin from the 1950s oh, comes through the wow. PCGS offices, which is the exact same office building that PSA is headquartered in. Same company. How could you not say, "Boy, that coin looks too good to be true"? Uh, how does that not fuck up the card? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Again, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's paper, but it's fucking paper and you're putting liquid on it. That, that does that. I, I'm at a loss. The hobbies pass I me mean, by. If we're allowing that we're like, I'm I mean, totally hey, like I'm done. Like we could just close, close the camera, retire. Just, just call well, it a day. If we I'll can just, just bid on Michael Ola candy cards. If that's the hobby guys, I just want to build on Michael Ola candy cards and call it a day and buy Rolex watches that I know are real. Sorry, but that's what I want to do because I, I, I don't trust anything in this hobby. If, the, if this is the doesn't look like a chemical scientist to me, doesn't look like somebody that. I mean, he's doing this to modern. He's doing this to vintage. Again, if it was disclosed, I'd have no problem with it. If it was disclosed, Mickey Mantle, PSA 8 cleaned. Got no problem with it, but this is none of this is disclosed. None of this is disclosed. Well, there's a reason for that. We all Vi know the vile autographs is all in Santiago's videos. Odd guy. Well, yeah, story checks out. Thank you, Jason. Story checks out. If vile autographs is making fun of us, but he's a Santiago man purse guy. Story checks out on him. David Snyder with the 99. Any update on the Tesla pickup in Austin? Hope you guys make the Dallas card show sometime. Do you think the true value? What do you think the true value of cards HQ would baseball card stock be considered assets or a liability? So uh, first question have not gotten an update from Tesla. Hopefully get one soon. Oddly enough, there is a chess tournament in, uh, in the great state of Texas that I want to try to, I'm a huge fan of, of Hans Neiman who is a chess player who was accused of cheating, uh, who has a lot of like sports card radio in his blood. Like I watch this guy and he's like, I feel like he's like a, a, a cousin of mine. Uh, he has a tournament in, in Texas. I think it's like in June or July. So I talked to my wife about it. We might make a trip out there. Um, if it coincides with a, a pickup of a cyber truck, that would be absolutely fantastic. Looks like I'm keeping my job there. That, that was in, that was in question for about a week or two. It looks like I'm keeping my job so I can certainly afford a cyber truck these days. So the minute Elon Musk gives me a call, guys, I'm in Austin, Texas, picking up a cyber truck. I'm not going to lie. Okay. The minute he calls me, I'm, I'm, I'm there. Uh, second question is, would we make the Dallas card show? Maybe if I'm in, I wouldn't go to Texas just for the Dallas card show, but we have an invitation to go to uh, Mr. Brian Gray's beautiful new spread that he bought in the, I think of the Corpus Christi area, which I think is 30, 40 minutes away. When you live in California, look, an hour drive, three hour drive, four hour drive is nothing. Okay. It's, it's really nothing. So you, you don't really, you don't really think about 
three to four hour drives in California are different than, than other parts of the country. So I don't like, I would go to Texas to meet up with Mr. Brian Gray could do some video content with him. I would certainly go there to pick up a, a cyber truck. I would certainly go there. I have other family that has just moved there. Certainly go there to visit them. And if the Dallas card show is, is right around that same time, certainly would go there. I would not go there strictly for the Dallas card show only because you have card shows out here in California that are just as good. You got the Burbank card show, which we haven't gone to the Auburn card show guys. The Auburn card show is the best card show I've ever been to. You can show it is yeah. literally the Auburn card show is like you, you can't even walk in a straight line. It is like a club, a nightclub in there. Like I'm not exaggerating either. It's like, like I remember the first one that the, I've only been to one. I know you went to the second one. I wasn't able to make it the second one, but I went to the first one. I showed up like, I don't know. It was like 30, 40 minutes late or whatever. And I was like, oh, I'll just be able to show up late. Who cares? Nobody's going to be there. I show up and it's like a fucking club. It's like elbow to elbow. And it's like sweaty and it's misty and it's musty. And I was like, damn, this place is popping. Okay. So, um, there's card shows out here in California that, that are as good or be, in my opinion, better than the, the Dallas card show only because free parking, free to get in the low end stuff sells. I got to love it. John Winkler. Sorry. The card deal.com. It's got to be a great website for $5. Adrian from a league of their own just hit 5k subs, a podcast every Saturday active in the hobby good people for sure give her a look so we have adrian i guess is a female these days from a league of her own great movie a league of thank you own. the card deal adrian league of her own okay i don't know i think the movie shit's gonna come up okay make it copyrighted fair enough Oh, wait, right here. This is her. Okay. This is it. We're subscribed. We're in. Look at this. Okay. I'm in. I'm in. All right. Adrian, she's what's more up? Than welcome to... Wonderful Adrian. young lady. She's more than welcome Adrian. to come on the show anytime she right wants. Right here, guys. A league of her own right here. I think we, uh, the last female we had on was... Uh, God, Candace. What was her name? Candace. Candace. Uh and don't be offended if I forget your name. I forget everybody's name unless you're Chad Ochocinco and Joe Burrow. Um or Magic Johnson. Libby Dan. Kobe. Libby. Well, come on. Come on. Come on. Um, so yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Good tip. Good tip. John Winkler with the dollar ninety nine job offering one K to pull. First pull of his card again. These guys are narcissists. They, they, they're, they're, they'll, they'll, they'll prop up the price of these cards, but at the end of the day, it's a five dollar card, guys. It's a five dollar card. Christine, my friend sold me a mantle Ted Williams auto plaque and a limited Gretzky Hall of Fame induction plaque for a hundred dollars. Getting ready for a show it sounds like a hell of a deal. Sounds like a hell of a deal. Have your friend contact us. If that stuff's real, have your friend contact us. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> with the $5 again, loyal fan of the show. And uh, if there's anything you need, we try to give people tips and try to give people advice best we possibly can. Again, it's only our probably 30th year in this hobby. 24 or five years as a dealer. I know there's a lot of these guys that have just started dealing sports cards in the last two or three years that you know, or these, these influencers, if you will, but we got our wholesale license, uh, you know, it's 25 years ago. Jeff won cardboard life's bracket for the most hated. Really? I did not know that. That's according to Jason Moran for the $2 most hated. Sometimes though, being the most hated is not, is, is not always that bad. Oh, I see. Did you see the meme with him and curator? <laughs> Where? Right the here. fifth one. Oh, yeah. There you go. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> we were hoping we would see Mr. Curator at the card show we were at. Oh, there it is. Wow. There's the bracket. 
Do you see the bracket? bracket? Oh, look at the back. Man. Guy. Man. Wow. Curator made it to the final. Yago's on there. Blaz was made it a couple rounds. Wow. Gary V. Wow. You have Probstein. I think you have Mojo. the Prism God. Card I'd porn. love to make it in this bracket. See how far we made. Mojo we, we made it pretty far, I feel like. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, that's funny. That is funny. That is good yeah, right there, dude. Curator's uh, sidekick was at the card show that we were at. I offered him a donut. He had a Dunkin' Donuts jacket on. The one that like Tom Brady and um, God, what's the actor? The Matt Damon and the other guy. Uh, they they just did a Super Bowl ad for that. I offered him a donut, but he politely declined. This guy, my man, had the same jacket right on. Merlin, yeah, the jacket. On. Merlin, that's his name. Where was the great one? That's what we were wondering. Where was the great one this weekend? He did not want to make it to the dis dingy and dusty cow palace. I don't blame him. Don't blame God. Him. We would have had to. Yeah, we would have had to make some. Uh, the, I don't want to ever waste the interaction with one of these guys, a great creator or Jeff sure. or Mojo. Like there was some talk at the Auburn card show of Mojo being there. And I was like, look, guys, don't ever do that unless I get a heads up so that I can get a camera crew and audio like yeah. we. We have 600 people still watching us two hours into this live stream. I want to give them that content. I don't want to yes. dab up the great creator or Jeff or the, Hey, what's right. up guys? No, we need the interaction so that we can document it as real professional journalists that we are. And so that our chat can see that can experience the iron circle being broken. The iron circle. If the these guys are said, the iron circle the iron okay. circle these guys you know are a little too shy and scared to probably come on sports card radio probably actually not to talk to us it's actually really not us it's the chat yeah. i think people are yeah, afraid to come destroyed. on sports card radio <laughs> and it's, it's it's getting destroyed in the chat so shout out to you guys being the most intimidating force in this entire hobby. Talk about power and influence. Certainly. I think the sports, Certainly. the sports card radio chat has as much power and influence as, as just about anybody, <laughs> because Probably. that's why, that's why we don't get on uh, interview guests is because if it was just us, if it wasn't live, whatever, Hey, we can handle those guys. We've seen them do interviews. If they're not like, you know, going to beat you down or whatever. I think they, I think people don't come on because they know, that we don't control the chat. We don't censor the chat. Whatever gets said in the chat, you know, gets said. So, I mean, and, yeah, and I think, I think Tim draws the line. I think Tim draws, and that's why it's good that Tim's here because I would not draw the line. You could say whatever the hell you want. Uh, I wouldn't give a damn, uh, it, even if it was way over the line. I mean, there's some things where you post some people's addresses and things like that. That's probably draws the line. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't really draw the line at a whole lot. Tim does have a line that he draws, and I do appreciate that. Christine says, sports card investor said he has Atlanta on lockdown. Oh, guys, that'd be like me saying I have Livy Dunn's on lockdown. Come on, stop. <laughs> Atlanta is Atlanta's ah. a big city. I I did talk a little mess on, on the great state of Atlanta or Cobb County or whatever you want to call it. Um, come on, it's a big state, it's a big city. There's other card shops there that do a great job and that might ha not have millions of dollars to blow on a location and overbuild it with HGTVs and breakers cabanas. But come on, we know Atlanta is a big, big, big place. Just like Burbank is in quote, Los Angeles, California. There's other card shops that we know we've even gone to in LA that are as good or, or, or better than Burbank. Jason Moran with the $2. How much is Cards HQ in the hole so far? I mean, I don't think he's like he's in the hole big time and he's competing with the problem with him is he doesn't he doesn't excel in this environment where you have all these repacks and these rebuyers out there on whatnot. Like Cards HQ would probably be more successful if the market collapsed because then he would be the incremental buyer. He would be the buyer. But instead, what we've seen, which I talked about right at the jump, we've seen comps go from 80 to 85 to 90. We know people that are getting 100 and 110% comp. Even Golden is offering 107% comp, basic, more or less. 
their offer is a little bit different. But we know of dealers that are literally offering 90, 95, 100% comp for your cards. He would do a hell of a lot better if, if there was no incremental buyer out there. But everybody with a whatnot account is a buyer. Backyard Breaks knows a lot of people, guys. They're not buying those Nebula cards that they're putting in their Nebula themselves. They have a people out there that are selling them those cards. And they're paying a stiff premium for those cards. So Jeff Wilson would actually do better if the hobby would collapse. Did that guy not have a shirt on? It's weird. Anyways. Really? Like right there? He does. does he have a shirt on? No, he, yeah, he had a shirt on, yeah. <laughs> it looked weird. B Rome with the 99 super sticker. Thank you. He actually two, I think. B Rome with 20 bucks. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Belvedere is not cheap. I need We're some of like, that. That's like a third Damn. of a bottle. I need some of that. I got S nothing over here. Hey, SCV sports card in the chat. You guys have stones. That is for sure. Thank you. And I think somebody asked, do we have, will we have SCB sports card? Yes, we will have him on the program at some point. I don't think he needs our help. I don't think he needs he to come on the show. He, he definitely doesn't. Job. Yeah. Right. I need his help. How do I look like that? How do I get biceps like that? Look good. I guess <laughs> being 22 years old or whatever he is. Uh, that helps. Um, and being single and whatever. Um, have kids and and get a mortgage and and two Tesla car payments and and watch how your body uh, deteriorates. Anyway, hey, you just get old, uh, boy. I I work yeah. out and I'm still fat. So <laughs> I, 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 just... I I I took like I can show it. Like I took I think I took like sixteen thousand steps today and I'm fat because I take a, a sip of the kombucha with uh, <laughs> oh, calories in the whole bottle. Anyways, uh, um. Go. He doesn't need our help. What I'm waiting for is the robes. We need some robes. Louis oh, Vuitton is not selling robes at the moment, guys. Uh, so I'm looking robe. for a robe. I don't. SCV, I know, is my is uh, budget conscious. I think he says he pays like 20 bucks for his robes. I'm more of like the $4,000 robe. So I'm waiting for that. Number two, my boy Ocho Cinco, Chad Johnson, former wide receiver of the Cincinnati Bengals. He sells cigars. Uh, those are the cigars I want. I want to buy a few. I want to get those in the mail. I want to get a Louis Vuitton robe and I want to get some Chad Ocho Cinco cigars and then we'll have SCB on the show, but he he'll come on the show at some point, but he doesn't need our help. He doesn't need our help. The videos are. PSA yeah, they're great. Uh, <laughs> I just think he, yeah, they're great. Huge content. They're, they're amazing. Huge content value. Lyle with the 499 says PSA needs a higher Kurtz card. I don't think that's a bad idea. I think for him, he can identify some of this stuff. He could be the one. It's almost like a cyber. So what cybersecurity firms like Palo Alto Networks, Microsoft, uh, uh, Zscaler, the big, uh, the big uh, cybersecurity guys, even the United States government will hire hackers hire people that have actually been committed of crime of hacking they'll actually hire them to help them identify the crime and i think that that actually if i was um if i was kurt's card care to me i would pivot to that sooner rather than later because this doesn't look proprietary to me dip a card in some liquid and rub it down this doesn't really look proprietary to me but a six-figure job working at collectors or at bgs or sgc or whatever that to me is job security like that to me would be like job security okay and he could do it undercover too he could kind of continue his grift here and then talk to the psa 10 or the you know the other liquids out there that exist and keep kind of in in, in tune with the community that's what microsoft does that's what the united states government does that's what other governments do like to me, I would pivot really quickly to being an asset to the grading company rather than doing what he's doing here. Cause this doesn't look proprietary to me. Looks like in a year's time, you're just going to be one of like a million doing this where you could be like the one guy at working at BSA that like knows about this shit. Christine, it's been very generous tonight. 
It's real. I sent you a message and pick. Whoa, wait a second, Ryan. Which which picks are we talking about? She's talking about the Mickey she's Mantle. Talk, and I she's talking about the Mickey. Or she's talking about Unfor- how she. I think she was talking about how she was stripping. I, unfortunately, she's probably talking about the mantle and Ted Williams. But you know, maybe maybe I'll maybe I'll open up the phone here in a minute and I'll get some really good picks. That's fantastic. Tell you what, yeah, uh, sports card radio does have its advantages, and uh, you know, if uh, what's the other influencers out there that we talked about? Breaks with Jess, Sarah Rips, she rips, Mama Breaks. DMs are open. What's the other one? Uh, the PWCC girl. What's her name? Betsy, Betsy Higgins, baby. She wants to send Livy Dunn, obviously. Or DMs are open to Livy Dunn at any time. She's more than welcome to contact us. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Guys, it has been too long. Two hours and 30 minutes. Uh, as always, we appreciate you spending us a, th- a Thursday night with us as you have opening day baseball. I'll sleep during the giants game. They lost. Yeah. Uh, you have college basketball. I'm hoping San Diego state won. If anybody knows in the chat, the, the result of that San Diego state game, I'd be appreciated. I do know somebody on the bench of San Diego state. In fact, I was in his house, uh, less than six months ago. So do have connections to San Diego state. I'm hoping they win. If they didn't, that's okay. They had a great run last year. Um, Thank you all for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Some people call us journalists. Some people call us watchdogs. Some people call us racist. Some people call us whatever they want to call us. But at the end of the day, we thank you guys. It looks like San Diego State lost by 30. That's a problem. Although I did Woo-hoo! have... I, Illinois and I think I have Illinois in my bracket going first so it's good for me personally but sadly I know one of the assistant coaches on San Diego State sadly for him Uh his run is over his run is over thank you guys for tuning in unless he bet the game look Otani (laughs) yeah (laughs) had some juice on it because if you're an assistant coach you trying to become head coach so He's trying to make much money. money. He's still a young guy. He's going to become that head coach. Oh, he's good. Good, then. Thank you, guys. I think Super Producer Tim did have to dip. Um, he had a so date. He had a date. We got we to gotta find out. He had Whoa. a date that he had to go to. So we got to hey. find out next week okay, how the went. date went. And maybe okay, we can we get a little picture picture or something. Yeah, we, we we gotta, we, we're going to get the tea from Tim next week. You know what week. we need is like a sub stack. Like I've always thought about this. We need a sub stack where we can kind of post all the rumors and all the bullshit that we get. And it. then maybe a little bit of, you know, you're on the dating scene, you know, maybe a little picture That's every true. once in a while. Tim, it sounds okay. like he's on the dating scene. He's in a much better city, in my opinion, than you oh, are God. for the dating scene. Yeah. Uh, oh, and so, and I think he's a little younger than you are and probably in a little better shape. Yes. And yes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, can we get some pictures of some of these volleyball players? I, last time we were at Hermosa, Ryan, it wasn't raining, which I what, last time I was there, it was raining. The merchandise I mean, out the window was, uh, it was, uh, let's just say clean. Livy Dunn quality or Miss Rip's quality. Wow. Okay. I think you remember it was the Super Bowl and it was, it was high quality. I was, uh, <clears throat> I was inebriated during that Super Bowl. I know that. I, I was, uh, I was, I was, I was flying high that day. Let's just say that I was, I was, I was really, really flying high that day. The chat needs a name. I just think it's, it's the, it's the influence of the hobby. The hobby is the chat. The chat is the hobby. When you talk about the hobby, I think it's the chat. That's just my opinion. Right. It's choose its rich baby thing that's right choose rich choose rich yes choose rich, baby. that guy's amazing uh yeah how is sarah in an empty room by herself ryan i she have I, I'm, I'm on my way yeah i'm, I'm on lie. my way there yeah I'm, <laughs> oh, I, fair I, enough. I'm speeding wait, down the highway 
we have Mr. Rips. Is it still Mr. and Mrs. Rips or is there, are you, are you privy to that situation or is it? I'm not, I, we really should have like a little section of the show, 15 minutes. Like we need to know, like, are they still, they're enough. still break together. I would imagine yeah. that there's definitely still a relationship there, but I would love, sure. I would actually love to know that. I, I would, I would love to know that. We, so maybe we'll next week's show. We'll have a little love connection update. We got Tim's got a date. We'll I'll, I'll try to get some dirt or Nikki and Sarah still together. And, and, you know, I'll update my status. So. Very interesting. Yeah. Thank you for the updates on San Diego state. Appreciate it. UConn. I thought they were playing uh -oh. Illinois, but UConn it makes sense. UConn. A lot of people have UConn as the winner in their bracket. Sarah rips on OnlyFans would be different. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to put anybody on OnlyFans that doesn't want to be on OnlyFans, but uh, lovely young lady. And we'd love to have not only her, but Mr. Rips as well. I think would both be that's a Tesla. I think it would be interesting to have them both on just a, all right, I'll slide into their DMs. Okay. I think they both follow me on Instagram. You're more than welcome to log into my Instagram account and Instagram them both. I think this so, is it over here. Yeah. This is you. More than welcome to use the Instagram account however you want. Uh, anybody, and, and lastly, this is the last thing we talk about, is anybody that wants a follow on Instagram, just message us and keep messaging us. I am terrible. If you look at, like I had somebody, a, fan, a huge fan of the show, be like, you never respond to my text. If you look at my text messages, I have over 1,800 that I have not responded to. I am lit. My mom will text me and it'll take me a month to get back to her. I am literally one of the worst people in the world. If you look at my email, here, I'll show you my email. 9,000 emails. That's bad. 400 phone calls. Guys, That's I am bad. literally one of the worst people in the world at following back at responding to messages. Doesn't matter if you're my mom or you're a fan of the show. If you want to follow back, just continue to message and I will do my best. Message me and I'll do it. R message Ryan and and I'm looking for a new Rolex. I'm looking for a new Rolex. It costs about $36,000. And let's just say I have like $3,000. So I'm trying to figure out how I come up with the rest. I do answer. Yes. When my Rolex AD calls, I do answer. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that is true. Uh, I just bought my wife $3,000 three carat earrings. So, wow. That's the reason why I don't have any money. Would you do my, wrong? If my wife put all her jewelry on, it's worth more than her house. So that's that's a shame. That's a shame. That's not financial advice either. Thank You're you guys. Really like Kobe. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Uh, <laughs> Kobe, I don't... Kobe, Kobe cheated on his wife and then bought her like a thirteen five million dollar <laughs> ring or something. <laughs> like a three million dollar ring. That's amazing. It's probably <laughs> worth like ten million now. Uh um I don't subscribe to the Dave Ramsey lifestyle, guys. When you die, they don't put your credit score or your bank account balance on your tombstone. Live your life. Enjoy your life. It's short no matter what. And enjoy yourself. Especially, tragically, there were several people on that Baltimore bridge whose life was cut short this week. And they're not going to put their credit score they're not going to put how much money they have there in their 401k. They're not going to put their bank account balance or how well they manage their finances on their tombstone. Live your life. Enjoy yourself. Spend your money. Money comes and goes. Money comes and goes. Buy some Will Greyer cards. You know what I mean? Buy some Will Greyer. Buy some Michael. Enjoy Michael's yourself, guy. And enjoy yourself. Right. Goddamn right. Thank you for tuning in tonight, guys. We appreciate it. I look forward to next week. God bless everybody that tuned in, and I look forward to next week. If you want to follow back on Instagram or Twitter, message, message me. Ryan, because I'm clearly, <laughs> unless your break was Jess or Livy Dunn.
and I'll instantly get back to you. But yeah. Or, yeah. I think yeah. there was a girl that uh, Alex, uh, Alex, that was on Golden's TV show. I think oh, SCV yeah. like totally insulted her. Did you see that video that SCV posted <laughs> where he totally destroyed her? Um, if you're like, you know, in that, in that range, I will probably get back to you very quickly. Very quickly. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you guys again soon. But for now, we're out of here. What's going on with that PPP? You done a lot of talking, not a lot to see. Up in the millions like 2.3. But Jeff got it all getting off scot free. Trying to talk tips like we talking about stock. But you're talking about men printed on cause stock. When you open your mouth, I take it with a grain of salt. Cause the market's down and you're a clown, it's all your fault. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson Did you dip Jeff? I think you dip Jeff What you talking about? I don't think you dipped yet Willie's doing shady shit like the G.O.B.'s Like his whole failed thing with them NFTs Taking money from the people to pay Most of them are broke, but that's okay He's getting money, even better tax free Loving all the stimulus from PPP You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit going on with that PPP? You done a lot of talking, not a lot to see. Up in the millions like 2.3, but Jeff got it all getting off scot free. Trying to talk tips like we talking about stock, but you're talking about men printed on cause stock. When you open your mouth, I take it with a grain of salt, cause the market's down and you're a clown, it's all your fault. You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson Did you dip Jeff? I think you dip Jeff What you talking about? I don't think you dip yet Willie's doing shady shit like the G.O.B.'s Like his whole failed thing with them NFTs Taking money from the people to pay Most of them are broke, but that's okay He's getting money, even better tax free Loving all the stimulus from PPP You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Peace out. Thanks, guys. <laughs>